Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. All protocols duly observed at this moment. I appreciate you taking out the time to be here with us um, this afternoon. This afternoon promises to be very enlightening, eye-opening, and um, of course, wonderful. I would like to hear from the very intelligent um, councils from the various universities that qualified for this preliminary stage of the moot court competition. So I welcome all of us to the live virtual moot, comp uh, moot court competition for uh, law faculties in Nigeria. This is the very first live virtual moot court competition ever to hold in Nigeria. And so we hope that um, with this opportunity given to us, um, we would set a pace that other organizations and other law faculties will begin to imbibe, you know, to follow the, the trend of um, the new technology. And uh, we saw that during the pandemic, uh, most of us relied so much on the internet. And so we moved our offices and our lives virtually to uh, the internet. So that being said, this uh, program, this event um, was brought to you by Honorable Justice Innocent Mwezulike Foundation. So quickly, I will share my screen to talk a little bit about our foundation um, before we move into the proper introductions um, of the judges and of the teams that are participating. And then also um, the time frames allocated for each and operations, and then what will follow immediately after that. Okay, so um, this is. Honorable Justice Innocent Muzulike Foundation. It's an international non-governmental organization formed to honor the legacy of late Honorable Justice Innocent Azubike Muzulike, who at the time of his death was an acclaimed professor of land and property law, authored over 25 books, and served as chief judge of Enugu State, clinching the longest serving chief judge in Southern Nigeria. The foundation delivers its mission through the promotion of excellent legal education, research and charity initiatives. Some of our facilities and programs include, but not limited to law library, legal research center, annual lectures, workshops and seminars, and of course, educational grants and funding. Now, let's talk about some of our projects. These are some of our projects. The Law Library, as an organization that is focused on building the capacity of law scholars and lawyers through legal research, the Honorable Justice Innocent Mwesmike Foundation Library provides members with access to millions of printed law texts and visuals covering different aspects of law. This is to ensure that all legal scholars and lawyers through our facilities and programs are well equipped to get the necessary skills and knowledge that would support their development. For example, our interns, volunteers, and partners enjoy free membership and have access to millions of materials in our library. You can see in the picture, these are um, students from the University of Nigeria on their visit to our law library here in Enugu State. And of course, we also have annual lectures. Every year, an annual memorial lecture is held in honor of his lordship, and it features a, a convergence of intellectuals in academia, bar, bench, and politics to discuss contemporary legal issues and challenges in the Nigerian legal system. The first annual lecture and book presentation held um, on 27 September 2019 at Honorable Justice IA Umezlike Auditorium, High Court of Justice, Enugu State, Nigeria. It featured the launch of the book, Honorable Justice, Innocent Mwesulike, A Chronicle of Leading Judgments, Volume 1. The foreword of the book was written by the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Honorable Justice uh, Tanko Mohammed CFR. Well, former. This year, the annual lecture will hold in London, United Kingdom. Okay, so now, aside um, the um 
aside the uh, the annual lectures, we also have um, series of books. I mentioned earlier at the beginning that um, his lordship authored over 25 books. These are the uh, very few I could put on this uh, slide. A Chronicle of Leading Judgments, and then we have the ABC of Contemporary Land Law in Nigeria, The New Weeks and the Challenges of Legal Practice in Nigeria. These are very important books, especially um, uh, relating to legal education, especially for you law students uh, that are online with us um, today. And so most of uh, his law student books are currently under review. And then I mentioned grants and scholarships. The Honorable Justice Innocent Mosque Foundation provides grants to law scholars to help support their dreams of becoming lawyers and contributing to development of a more civil society. Yes, this is um, one of the core um, objectives of our foundation to be able to sponsor very intelligent and highly qualified law students to achieve their dreams of becoming lawyers. And then this is the very first non-legal um, projects that we embark on the Innocent Project. It's a charity initiative in the grassroots aimed at empowering small and medium-sized charities, NGOs and businesses to join forces and resources for a global impact. So this particular project is more of a humanitarian and also of course human rights initiatives. Now, um, of course, our organization can be found on our website. You can see us virtually on, website, on our website or you can reach us through the email on the screen, a Twitter handle, our Instagram handle, and also on Facebook. Honorable Justice Innocent Music Foundation is on Facebook. And also you can also, if you'd like to uh, support, volunteer, or even intern with us, these are some of the uh, platforms that you can uh, reach us through. Thank you very much. Um, that is about the organization. Um, I would like us to kickstart this process. We can see on our live uh, screen what we have for today. So I would quickly welcome everyone who are here on the platform or who I assume will be here. First, I'd like to begin with um, our judges. I'd like to introduce the presiding judges for this Smith Court competition. You can see the lady on the screen. Her name is Ifoma Iloba Ejete Esquire. She was called to the Nigerian Bar in November 2006. She holds a master's degree in law from the University of Benin, 2013. And she, she holds, or she, she has had a stint in private practice administration and is actively involved in human rights activism particularly as regards promoting and promoting the, and protecting the rights of women and children. Ifoma Ejita is con currently a legal researcher with the Delta State Judiciary and is currently legal advisor, Nigerian Red Cross Delta State, legal advisor, Uniben Alumni Asaba Branch, legal advisor, Nigerian Institute of Management Chartered Asaba Branch, and second, Secretary, International Federation of Women Lawyers, FIDA, Asaba, Delta State. Please uh, let's welcome our uh, judge, Ifoma Iloba Ejite Esquire. And then we also have um, on the right, Your Honor, um, Stephen Olumide Agbede. He is a judge of the customary court of FCT Abuja, an associate of Institute of Chartered Arbitrators and Mediators Abuja. Stephen Olumide Agbede Ono was called to the Nigerian Bar in the year 2012. Let's make welcome our judge, Stephen Olumide Agbede. Now, I would also like to welcome the teams that we have today. Like we said in our May, we have had several uh, applications from various universities in Nigeria, uh, but we had to streamline our competition to just four teams. This is the preliminary stage. And then the two teams that would scale through this stage will go on to the finals. And then we have grouped you into group A and group B. In group A, 
the one team will go against the other team in group B, one team will also go against the other team. So now in group A, we have University of Nigeria. We have also used pressure stones to name the various teams for easy pronunciations and also to remove bias from whatever we're going to be doing today. And so your university name remains anonymous after now. And so we'll call you by your team after now. So in group A, we have members from the University of Nigeria. We will call you Team Diamond. And then we have the representatives from Team Diamond, Chinedu Patrick Aneke, and Victoria Udo. And then they are going against, as plaintiffs, they are going against the defendants in group A, University of Uyo. We have named them Team Sapphire. And then the participants in that team are Inyang, Esther Elijah, a vulnerable student from University of Uyo, and then Gabriel Eversam Lista, also in 400 level, University of Uyo. Group B, University of Benin, we have named you Team Ruby. And then there are the plaintiffs in Group B, Braham Paul C, Piper Chima, 400 level, and then Philip Kefas Terry, 400 level, Team Rugby. They are going against the defendants from University of Illinois, Team Emerald. We have named them Team Emerald. And then the members under that Team Emerald are Ismail Khadijat Moromoke, 200 level. And then we have Ibrahim Karibat Adedoni, 100 level. Team Emerald. So I welcome all of you again to this. And then finally, I would also like to introduce our Bailey for this program. There's no other person than um, Obiora Chibuzo. He is a belief. And then after my introductions, he will go ahead to call the smarter. So Thank you so much. I hope we are ready. Thank you so much for listening. I hope we are ready. Yeah, sorry, um, uh, Madam Moderator, please can I get the names of the team again? Yes. I'm trying to put it. Okay. In the group A, the group A will speak first. Group A will speak first. And then in group A, we have. Let me go back again so that I, I don't, um, let me go back to the slide. Let me go back to the slide again so that, um, let me share the screen again. Uh, moderator, okay. please. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Please, um, can we just refer to them by their pressure stones? Yes, please. I think henceforth, uh, I would have even preferred that we just um, go straight to the pressure stones. Uh -huh, yes, so please. Leaves every, so, every Team Diamond. So, we refer to them as in their names. Uh, if you are not clear yes. on what your, your name is, you can uh, raise your hands and um, speak on that. Are you sure of what your name is, Mr. Olumide? Yeah. Okay. I and you are going, know. you know who you are going against? No, I'm actually uh, not. No, student, Olumide um, is one not of the judges. Uh, Olumide, is, Olumide is not, uh, yeah. So um is a contestant. Honor, isn't look it? at the look, just take a look at the screen. No, I'm not okay. Oh, it's not, it's not. Exactly. Team oh, Diamond. Okay, okay, yes, okay. I can see you now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was so, wondering why he was so, needing clarification. That's why I was giving guidance. Yes. Uh, go ahead. I, I love I love what you know, I love what just happened because uh, um at least this the the counselors will know that there's no there's no form of uh, connivance we don't know each other and i pity my alma mater because they to be, have to be extra exactly they have to be extra yeah. for me oh, really? to even give Very... them any day it's going to be terrible i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> they should don't feel too bad but they will have to exactly. live up to whatever I... yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so it's extra so, for them so team diamond problems. University of Benin, please take note of, I mean, University of Nigeria, take note of your team name, Team Diamond. You are the plaintiff in group A, going against defendants 
University of Uyoya Team Sapphire, Team Sapphire in group, um, group A. And then Group B, Group B, University of Benin, Team Ruby, you are going against the defendants, University of Illinois, Team Emerald. So if um, you got that, I would give room for the belly to begin his job. Belly, if are you here? Can you hear good us? Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, good afternoon. Go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, mm -hmm. everyone. Welcome to the Honorable Justice Ministry K Federal Foods Competition. The matter before us is between OKK, the plaintiff, and OP, the defendant. So OKK will be represented by the Diamond uh, team, and OB, the defendant, will be represented by the team Sapphire, University of Rio. So um, team, A, team A and Team Diamond will have 30 minutes. Each speaker will take 15 minutes and the other speaker will take 15 minutes. Meanwhile, um, um, Team Sapphire will take 30 minutes. One person will take 15 minutes and the other person 15 minutes. I believe we all understood what you're about to do now. So um, Team A, Team Diamond should start their presentation. Respectfully, your Lordship, I am C.P. Aneke Esquire, and appear with me on this matter today, your Lordship, is my colleague, V.I. Udo. May I please honor the court? Your Lordship, uh, our parents- v into Sorry, V.I. what? V.I. Udo. Udo, okay. Can you spell, please? Hello, can you hear me? This you can yes, go on. Yeah. If you can hear me. Okay, thank you, Lordship. Your Lordship, our appearance today yes, is for is. the plaintiff, Mr. Okeke. Your Lordship, um, if we are to proceed before the defendant enters appearance, I, I, I would assume that the defendant would enter appearance at this point. Your Lordship. You can proceed. Okay. Thank you, Lachi. Your Lachi, the matter today is question of briefs and adumbration. Your Lachi, um, uh, before your Lachi, have you found that the court is a written address on behalf of the plaintiff brought motion dated between the 30th day of June 2022, brought was to of the 31 rule one and two of any state higher court to pursue your rule. Your Lordship, the brief summary of the facts upon which this fact is, upon which this case is brought by the plaintiff is that in 1954, the plaintiff, Mr. Okeke, entered into a, and gave a vast portion of his land to Mr. Nwariaku, the father of the defendant, indefinitely. And in exchange and recognition of his title, your Lordship, Mr. Nwariaku gave the plaintiff Kola notes, establishing a Kola tenancy relationship between both parties. Excuse me, Mr. Aneke. Yes. Have you, have you served the, the defendant? Your Lordship, um, the instruction from the court was that the briefs would be exchanged at the end of hearing. Okay. When did you file your address then? Your Lordship, our address as well, Your Lordship, the court said that the, the address would also be filed at the end of hearing that we okay. should come and make our oral arguments. And so it's dated it. today, filed today. Yes, we'll Your Lordship. As such. Thank you very much, Your Lordship. So, Proceed. Thank you, Your Lordship. So, Your Lordship, after the, the rec in recognition of the plaintiff's title, the defendants, defendants father, Mr. Warrior, could give cola notes to the defender, to the plaintiff, establishing a cola tenancy relationship between both parties. The only condition attached to this cola tenancy relationship was that the land would be used for the sole purpose of, the, of cultivation of palm trees. 
subsequently your lordship, the plaintiff invested in the farming business of the defender of the defendant's father, Mr. Mwariako. And the argument was that 20% of the harvest will be, placed, will be paid to the plaintiff for 10 years. This relationship continued to the death of the plaintiff of the defendant's father, Mr. Mwariako. And upon his death, his son, Mr. Obi, the defendant in this case, inherited the custom, the colour tenancy as is the law and continued the relationship between both parties on the same terms. This relationship continued, however, continued, however, until 2002, when the defendant disappeared without notice to anybody. The defendant disappeared, leaving the land without care, and the land fell into disrepair. Three years afterwards, your lordship, the plaintiff, the owner of the land, in protection of his interest in the land, went into the land to take care of the land and harvest the goods in the land. When the plaintiff, when the defendant resurfaced three years later in 2005, the plaintiff in good faith relinquished the possession of the land back to him in continuance of the collateralcy between both parties. After this, the lordship, however, the defendant in challenging the title of the plaintiff as his overlord, and landlord in the collateral tenancy relationship, one, connived with a certain Mr. Okun to deny the title over lordship of the plaintiff, claim ownership of the land, and also your lordship subsequently in 2016, the lordship cleared all the palm trees in the land and established a pure water factory in the land, contrary to the argument between both parties that the land would be used solely for the cultivation of palm trees. It is on the basis of this, your lordship, and this long persistence of the defendant in the, in the act of challenging the title of his overlord, the plaintiff, that the plaintiff has brought this action to claiming, claiming for feature of the tenancy and the rights of repossession of the land. Your lordship, from these facts, we have highlighted four issues for determination. I will be conversing the merit my co-counsel, V.I. Udo, will converse the merits of the first and the second issues in 15 minutes, while I will be conversing the merits of the third and the fourth issues in the, in the, in the, preceding, in the succeeding 15 minutes. With the kind leave of this court, I will invite my co-counsel, your lordship, to converse the merits of the first and the second issues. May it please this court. Um, so, counsel. Yes, your lordship. Uh, I think before you proceed, or before your um, your colleague come on, I think you should. Don't you think you should state the, what the four issues are, so that we get to your yeah. record. Absolutely, your lordship. I can do that. Your lordship. Okay. The first issue is whether the plaintiff, Mr. OKK, has title to the land in dispute. The second issue. You need to calm down. Yes, your lordship. Um, okay, title I'll to the land to... in dispute. Yes, your lordship. Okay. Proceed. The second issue is whether long possession of land in cola tenancy or customary tenancy can warrant. Sorry, claim. sorry. Can I get you? You have again, to uh... note that the court is recording long hand, so you look at us when we look up. You proceed. Can you see us visually? Yes, you can she have a visual on us. So just notice when we look up, it means, and then you take cognizance of the fact that we're writing. So you can start number two again. Whether long possession, Whether long possession of land in cola tenancy. can warrant a claim of ownership. Thank you, Lordship. Lordship, the third issue is whether the plaintiff is entitled to a claim for the forfeiture of the tenancy.
and repossession of the land. The fourth issue, Your Lordship, is whether the defendant can succeed in a claim of trespass against the plaintiff. Thank you very much, Your Lordship. So Your Lordship, with the kind leave of this court, I would invite my co-counsel to converse the merits of the first and the second issue in 15 minutes. Ariel. Courts, B-I Udo. Udo as in U-D-O-H. A lot of for the purpose of the matter before you, I would be conversing the merits of issue one whether the whether the plaintiff has title to the land in dispute and for issue two whether long possession of a land which is subject to customary tenancy warrants a claim for ownership with the kind leave of the court i would love to proceed with my argument can I proceed Carry on. thank you your lordship your lordship it is the submission of counsel on issue one that the plaintiff indeed has valid title to the land in dispute. This is because under the, uh, the, the, the crux of this submission by counsel is that the plaintiff is identified as the family head of, of the OKK family. And as such, plaintiff has rights divested in him as the family head to transact and make decisions on behalf and with consent of members of the family. It is on this grounds that the plaintiff, Mr. OKK, acting on behalf of the OKK family, as the head of the family, has entered into customary tenancy with the deceased, um, with the, the father of the, the deceased father of the defendant, Mr. Wanryoku. The plaintiff in 1954 had entered into a, a customary tenancy agreement with Mr. Wanryoku, having divested rights of possession to Mr. Wanryoku in exchange for Kula. Your Lordship, it was established by the Supreme Court in the celebrated case of Makinde Akinwale, where the court held that where a landowner with due title accepts- Sorry, I didn't get the case. Please, Sorry, please, can please, please, please can we get the case again? Okay? <laughs> okay, my apologies. Yeah, Lordship. we didn't get the case, please. And citation. Wale, citation 2001. It's, oh, sorry, counsel. Mark in day against who? Akinwale. Counsel, can you hear me? Akinwale. Okay. Yes. Do you have the citation? Yes, your lordship. Okay. 2001 SC, one Supreme Court, 89. Page 89. Yes, page 89. Yes, your lordship. In this case, okay. the Supreme Court held that where a landowner accepts the use and occupation of land for an indefinite period or for a particular period, customary tenancy is implied. This means that if an owner of a land, having due title to the land, engages by diverting a portion of his land or his land in entirety to a third party for an indefinite period, the law assumes customary tenancy as a relationship between the landowner and the customary tenant. In this case before your lordship, in 1954, Mr. Okeke, having due title to the Okeke family land, had divested a portion of the family land to Mr. Wanryoku for an indefinite period, thereby establishing a customary tenancy relationship between the Okeke family, between Mr. Okeke and Mr. Wanryoku. It is also tried in law that the head of the family having the rights to establish, having the rights to engage in um, certain decisions on behalf of the family can alienate and divest rights in a third party. 
This was also the position of the law in the celebrated case of Luis and Bancoli, Luis and Bancoli citation. Luis, can you spell it, please? Spell the Luis. Is it Louis or Luis? L E Louis. L E W I S. Louis. Okay. Thank you, Lachie. Louis Bancoli. Citations. 1909, one Nigerian law report at page 82. It was in this case that the court established that a person appointed to or claimed as the head of the family has the right to divest interest of a family land or property in a third party. And the law would recognize it as a valid transaction between this head of family and the third party. So the question becomes, having established that Mr. Having established that Mr. OKK had the due title and valid rights to divest his interest or the interest of the family land of the OKK family to Mr. Wanryoko, he begs the question of the proof of customary tenancy that counsel submits. It was established in the case of Babatunde and Akimbade. Babatunde and Akimbade citations. 2005, Law Pavilion Electronic Report, LPELR, 5379, CA. Council Udo, I'm assuming this is going to be your um, uh, address because you are rushing. Go ahead. Yes, all these are contained in our written address. Okay, go ahead. Your lordship, it was established in Babatunde and Akimbade that a landowner asserting the existence of customary tenancy between himself and a customary tenant must establish the tenants and features of customary tenancy. These tenants itself in this particular case were established to be one, that the land in question was given in perpetuity. And that two, this land was done in exchange for a particular tribute. Going further, in the celebrated case of Mojeku and Iwuchuku, Mojeku and Iwuchuku, this is also contained in our written address, Your Lordship. In the celebrated case of Mojeku and Iwuchuku, the court held that where a customary tenancy is established and the customary tenant has um, collects rights of possession of the land in exchange for cola, it is deemed a cola tenancy. This can also be seen by the definition of cola tenancy in section two of the Cola Tenancy Act, number 25 of 1935. It was established here that once a landowner has divested interest of right of possession to a third party in his land, he is deemed the landowner and the other party deemed a cola tenant. Also, reverting to the position of the court in Babatunde and Akimbade, it was noted that the tenants of customary tenancy must show that the land was given in perpetuity and that for cola tenancy, cola must have given in exchange. From the facts of the case, Your Lordship, it can be seen that Mr. Okeke did indeed transfer his land to Mr. Wanryoku, the father, the deceased father of the defendant, for an indefinite period in 1954. And that in this same year, Mr. Wanryoku gave cola to Mr. Okeke which seals and establishes the cola tenancy that exists between the plaintiff and the deceased father. And so the question becomes, does Mr. Obi, the defendant in this matter, is he a party to this cola tenancy and can he be held bound by the agreement and terms of this cola tenancy? This was established by the court in the much celebrated case of Romaine and Romaine. Romaine, R-O-M-A-I-N-E, -E, same as the other counties. This, the citations of this case are also included in our written address. In this case, the court had established that where a, where a, a landowner has divested the right of possession and established polar tenancy exists between the landowner and the polar tenant, and that polar tenant is deceased, his rights be inherited by his successor. These successors are bound by the terms and contract of the polar tenancy. In the case of Udensi and Mobo, Udensi and Mobo, the court, the Supreme Court had established 
that the right of current of the right of possession of a cola tenant is an equitable interest that diverts to the successor in title after the predecessor is deceased. Which means that if, a, if party A and party B have a cola tenancy agreement and have certain agreement under this cola tenancy, having established that the cola tenancy exists between the parties and the cola tenant dies, whoever succeeds his land also succeeds the equitable interest of this cola tenancy and is thereby bound by the cola tenancy. Therefore, it is established that Mr. Obi, the defendant in this matter, is bound by is bound on that cola tenancy and has a valid contractual relationship with the plaintiff, Mr. Opeke. Well, if, um, if there are no other questions, I would love to move to issue two. I will converse my, my merits, the merits of issue two. You may proceed. Uh, you no may proceed. From here. Okay. Known from Thank here, you. Thank you, Lassie. On issue two, as to whether long possession of a land which is subject to post and polar tenancy can warrant a claim of possession. It is council's submission that long possession of a land that is subject to polar tenancy cannot, under the law, warrant a claim of ownership. In the celebrated case of Bad Mosi and Ajibodi, Bad Musi and Ajibode. This is also contained in our written address your lordship. Ajibade, is it? Yes, Ajibade. Yes, your lordship. Bad Musi and Ajibade. Yes, your lordship. In this case, the, the court had established that the right that is transferred between a landowner and a cola tenant is only a right of possession and nothing more. Meaning that where cola tenancy is entered between a landowner and a cola tenant, the only right which a cola tenant has to that land in person is a right of possession and, and the responsibility and obligation to keep to the terms of the cola tenant agreed with the landowner. This was also the position of the court in Iya and Shinebe. Shinebe, Iya and Shinebe. Can you spell it, please? Thank you. Spelled I Y A, and the respondent in that case is spelled S H I N E K P E. Iya and Shinepe. Okay. Was, Thank you. Yes, your lordship. It was also in this case that the court established that the right attained, the right asserted by its particular tenant, can only be a right of possession and nothing more. Hence. Where a tenant, a cola tenant, has after be after establishing the existence of tenant of cola tenancy between the landowner and a cola tenant, the only right that a cola tenant has is the right of possession and nothing more. In the celebrated case of Achibong and Ita, Achibong spelled A R C H I, Ita spelled I T A. In the words, in the words of the court. Once a tenant, always a tenant. Once it has been established that a cola tenancy has exists between a valid landowner and a cola tenant, he remains a tenant irrespective of how long he stays in that land. In Archibong and Ita, the, the contention before the court was that the, 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 the contention that the defendant had before the court was that he had inherited, his grandfathers had inherited the land from the landowner. And that his father inher inherited the land from his grandfather, and that he himself inherited the land from his father. So he was he confessed before the court that due to the long possession of the land in question, he is now the family head of the land and has rights to the land. But the court said no. Once a tenant, always a tenant, irrespective of how long you have been, especially when cola tenancy exists between the original landowner and the person that he entered into contract with, which was in this case with his grandfather. Relating this case before, relating this case it's to this case, Mr. Wanryoku, who had entered into a cola tenancy with Mr. Okeke, the plaintiff, was under cola tenancy with the plaintiff. And having established, following the principles of Udensi and Mubu, that this cola tenancy transfers. This man now is block. The fact that Mr. Obi, your lordship, I didn't get that. Lordship. Carry on. You have to slow Carry down on. a bit. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. 
carry on, I think. Um, I was the council was conversing that the cola tenancy, the fact that Mr. Okeke had entered into cola tenancy with Mr. Wanryoku. And Mr. Wario, having established the existence of the polar tenancy by the um, exchange of land in perpetuity in 1954 and the exchange of polar in 1954, and having established that this polar tenancy now falls on Mr. Obi, the successor in title, it, it, it goes far to also establish that irrespective of the fact that Mr. Obi has been in long possession of this land from 1954 to date, it does not entitle him to claim ownership of the land as the law does not permit such claims. Moving on your lordship, in Akin Lajun, Akin Lagun, A-K-I-N-L-A-G-U-N, Akin Lagun and Oshoboja, O-S-H-O-B-O-J-A. It was also reiterated. reiterated um, excuse me, I would like to know at least the year it helps us to um, look at the progression and then the authority. Uh -huh. okay. So we know whether it's a court of appeal judgment or a Supreme Court judgment. Uh, uh, it wouldn't be nice to just gloss over completely through the cases. So we have an inkling. We're going to see the, um, the, your address, but right now we can visualize the argument, the way it's going. Uh -huh. yes. So we know the courts that have said this and that, please. Eh? And we have that and the year at least. Yeah. If I know you are trying to keep to time, uh, to, to submit within the time frame, but we'd also like to know the year and the court so that we can know how persuasive, you know, the authority should be. Go ahead, please. As the court pleases. So Akin Lagoon and Oshobaje is a 2006 case, 2006, a Supreme Court judgment. Okay, thank you. 5 SE at page 261. Okay. Yes. Well, it was in this case that the court had re emphasized that long possession of the land does not convert the polar tenant to an owner of the land. It also begs, it, it was also the position of the already cited case, Iya and Shinepe. This is a 2020, 2020 case of Court of Appeal, where the Court okay. of Appeal held that the long possession of the appellants in that particular matter on the land in dispute does not grant them the status of ownership over the disputed lands. In the words of the court, long possession cannot stand as a defense to the claims of the rightful owner of the land. Hence, we reiterate again, as the court had reiterated in Achibong Anita, once a tenant, always a tenant and not tenure. Conclusively, Your Lordship, in Abioye and Yakubu, in Abioye and Yakubu, so the 1991 case by the Supreme Court, it was established also that cola tenancy cannot at any point change to ownership. Hence, plaintiff prays that the court resolves both issue one and issue two in favor of the plaintiff, holding that one. The plaintiff has valid title to the land in dispute by virtue of being the family head who has the right to make decisions and divest interest in the land to a third party with the consent of his family members as counsel has canvassed before the court. And that too, a customary tenancy and a color tenancy exist between the plaintiff and the, the, the father of the, the deceased father of the defendant, Mr. Obi, and that by the principle of law in the Supreme Court case of Ubosti and Mobu, that these cola tenants diverse to Mr. Obi by virtue of him being a successor in title. Three, or rather four, long possession of the land by defendants on this land in dispute, which is the subject matter of cola tenancy, cannot under the law, warrant a claim of ownership from all the cases and principles laid canvassed by counsel before this honorable court. Counsel prays that this court will resolve these issues in our favor and rule accordingly. May it please this honorable court. Thank you, Your Lordship.
You're welcome. At this point, I don't I, know. The kind indulgence of your lordship, I would love to call on my co-counsel to canvas the merits of this decree and call before your lordship. Carry on. I, I believe um, myself and my brother just thought you had just um, wrapped up your argument. <laughs> but um, I will wait to where I expected that somebody else was coming okay, up. Uh, I think that... It sounded like it, didn't it? <laughs> so, I, was, I don't know I who just... is, um, I don't know if it's the moderator that is um, um, uh, playing with our so, camera. Sorry, like brother, I don't know if it's. No, I, can I can hear you properly. You. But, I can um, see, but I, I can't don't... see myself. Huh? Yeah, I can't see you too. So sorry, um... I don't know what's going on. Let me. But I but can I see. Think I can see you. Um, your lordship, I can see you. Um, let me there. I can see you, but I can't see. Yes, um, um, my, okay, I don't I know who is moderating the time. Um, for the submission because Bellis, um, Bellis, the... Bellis. The Leonard Council uh, is taking clicked off my um, camera. Uh, okay, I think you should just re um re log in or something. Should... Okay, so the plaintiff council still have um issue three and four to converse. So are we I think their time is up. I them? think their time is up. I believe their time is up. Okay. Because they've taken okay. uh, 13, are we, are we, are 25, we and they had 15 minutes. They've done about 20 yes. minutes, actually. Okay. 20, okay. So I think minutes. they still have them. Okay, go ahead. So second counsel for the applicant. Or the plaintiff, go ahead. Yeah. He has to quickly wrap up. Um, no Thank pressure, but much, that's the position. Uh, Yes, Yolochi. Thank you very much, Yolochi. So as a court, I have about as a court please. So I have about ten minutes to wrap up our argument, Yolochi. So, Yolochi, okay. in order to save time, Yolochi, all the cases. Ten minutes. I thought it was fifteen minutes. Excuse me. Okay, no, each we had yeah. Total, yeah, each person has fifteen well, minutes. So, well, the each team has a total of thirty person. minutes. Okay. No, the team has a total of thirty minutes. Uh, one of the uh, one of the council was taking more than the fifteen minutes that is allocated. Okay, that, was allocated that is what to that's what I've so noticed. Then. That's why he is left with ten minutes. So please try and wrap up within ten minutes. Mm -hmm. yes. Proceed. Then. Yeah, let's see. Um, to save time, all the cases I'm going to mention are in our written address. So with the kind of the court, I'll just mention the year and the court. That the citation. So. Okay. Thank you, your lordship. On the third issue, your lordship, whether the plaintiff is entitled to a claim for forfeiture of the tenancy and possession of the land, it's my humble submission, your lordship, that the plaintiff is indeed entitled to a claim and the right of forfeiture, your lordship, and repossession of the land. Your lordship, the Supreme Court in the case of Remain and Remain, 1992, your lordship held that color tenancy is determinable mm. by an action. Sorry, council, sorry, council, sorry to uh, cut you. Uh, you said Romaine. Please, if you are pronouncing the names, uh, you know we cannot get, please, you can just do yes. well by spelling it. Romain and Romain. My co council had mentioned the case earlier. Okay. Yes, okay. your lordship. So, in that case, Okay, okay, all right. In that case, your lordship, the court held that polar tenancy is determinable by an action for forfeiture, and the rights of a polar tenant is limited to occupation of the land within good behavior, your lordship. The court, your lordship, the, the court of appeal in the case of Obodi and Ibete, a 2022 case held that where held this that where a tenant is in bad behavior, your lordship, that the customary landlord is entitled to a right of forfeiture of the land and possession of the land. In highlighting the ground, excuse your lordship, me, Aneke, Aneke, yes, your lordship. Or what did I What um courts and what um, court of appeal? Oh, yeah. court of appeal is court of appeal? Twenty twenty two. He said twenty twenty two. Court of appeal. Okay. Yes, your lordship. Proceed. 
in highlighting, thank you, Lordship, in highlighting mm -hmm. the grounds of bad behavior that would warrant a claim of forfeiture, the court of forfeiture, the court, the Supreme Court in Euro Abara and Ufomadu, Euro Abara and Ufomadu, 2009 Supreme Court, highlighted five grounds. Out of these five grounds, three grounds are relevant in this case. One, and a direct denial of the title of the overlord. Two, a claim of ownership by the tenant. And three, your lordship, the use of a, the land for a different purpose. Your lordship, these are the three grounds of misbehavior as highlighted by the court in Irabara and Ufomadu, which the defendant in this case has committed. On the first ground, direct denial of the overlord of the overlordship of the owner of the land. The Supreme Court, your lordship, in Makinde and Akinwole, Supreme Court 2002 case, that it says that the denial of an overlord's title by a tenant is an act of grave misconduct and misbehavior, which is sufficient enough to warrant automatic forfeiture of the land and the possession of the land by the overlord, the lordship. The court in this case simply held that once a customary tenant or a colored tenant denies the title of the owner of the land, that tenant loses his right to possession of the, of, of the land and forfeits the tenancy. In this case, your lordship, in 2005, the tenant, Mr. Obi, connived with a certain Mr. Okun to deny the overlordship of the plaintiff and in, in an attempt to dispossess the plaintiff's family of their land, which is the subject matter of the Kola tenancy. On the second ground, your lordship, that is when a Kola tenant claims ownership of the land of the overlord. The Supreme, case, the Supreme Court, your lordship, in the case of Makinde and Akinwole again, emphasize the effect of such an act. It stated, and with the kind leave of this court, I would read that where a tenant turns around not only to dispute the overlordship of the title holder, but goes on out of his way to claim ownership, he forfeits his rights as a tenant and his possession of the land. The lordship, the court went on in that case to hold that where the tenant persists in this, in this act and does not seek and has not sought any relief against forfeiture. The, the, the issue of forfeiture becomes a matter of law before the court. And the court, your lordship, has no discretion in this circumstance but to grant forfeiture in favor of the landlord. In this case, your lordship, in the same 2005, the defendant, who is the tenant of the plaintiff, claimed ownership, did not just deny the overlordship of the plaintiff, but claimed ownership of the land claiming that he inherited the land from his father who had been in possession of the land since 1954. At this point, you must point out that this ownership which he claims, this, owner, this possession which he claims his father has been in since 1954 was given to the father by the plaintiff on the basis of the cooler tenancy. The lordship, this in itself is sufficient act to warrant a picture of the cooler tenancy. Progressively, your lordship, on the third ground, the third ground of misbehavior by the plaintiff, the court, the Supreme Court, your lordship, in the case of Abioye and Yakubu, 2005, held that where a cola tenant uses a land for a purpose other than that for which it was given, he, he has breached a fundamental term of the cola tenancy and automatically forfeits his rights in the tenancy and gives the plaintiff, the owner of the land, the right to possess the land. In this case, your lordship, in 20, the only the, the term, the only condition upon which the land was given to the defendant in the cola tenancy was that he uses the land for the sole purpose of cultivation of palm trees. However, in 2016, the defendant going against this express condition, your lordship, cleared all the palm trees in this land and decided to establish a pure water factory. The lordship, this fact speaks for itself. The defendant has gone outrightly outside the purpose for which the land was given, and thus has committed a breach of the tenancy sufficient enough to warrant for feature of the tenancy.
You should be wrapping up. The theme of a future, right? The, uh, the court considered the duration of time upon which the defendant has existed in the forfeiture, in the denial of the landlord's title in, hold, in, in, in ruling on forfeiture. In this case, your lordship, the defendant has been in denial of the title since 2005, and this is 2022, your lordship. This is 17 years. And he has persisted in the challenge of the title of overlord. Therefore, your lordship, on the basis of this fact, we pray this court to grant this issue in favor of the plaintiff. On the fourth issue, your lordship, whether the defendant can succeed in a claim of trespass against the plaintiff. Our humble submission, your lordship, is in the negative. And the dictum of Justice Mohammed Bello in the Supreme Court case of Abiyoye and Yakubu is paramount in this case. Becomes exercisable on abandonment of the land. The Lordship, in Chikere and Okebwe, the Supreme Court held that a customary tenant is deemed to have abandoned the land when he leaves the land to fall into disrepair, such as that the interest of the landlord in the land could be affected if the disrepair continues. The Lordship, in this case, the defendant disappeared in 2002 without notice to anybody, and the land. Which is subject without and without putting anybody in care in before putting the land in the care of anybody. The lot in 2003, three, in 2005, three years later, this land had fallen into disrepair, which was why the plaintiff, the owner of the land, in a bid to protect his interest, entered the land to harvest the crops and put and care for the land to show his good faith. Your lordship, immediately the defendant resurfaced in 2005. He relinquished possession back to him in continuance of the Akula tenancy. This action, your lordship, cannot be held as an act in trespass. As succinctly put by the court in the case of Kodande and the Bokwe citation in our written address. On the basis of this, your lordship, we pray this honorable court to hold, because equity, equity helps those who come in good hands. He who comes equity must come, in, must come in good hands, your lordship. So the, the, the plaintiff has come to this court claiming that he was not in trespass when he entered the land because he sought to protect his interest in the land. But the court cannot hold him in trespass respectfully, your lordship. Therefore, we submit on this issue that the court rules in favor of the plaintiff. Bosomely, your lordship, the plaintiff adopts the relief sought in its written address as if as its prayers before this court in this action today. May it please this court. Thank you, Mr. Nike and Victoria Udo. Thank you very much, Your Lordship. Okay, um, our observation. Uh, I think cancel. Can you hear me? Yes, Your Lordship. Okay, cancel are uh, taking too much time in conversing their points. Uh, since you have them in your written address, you can just go straight to the point and, um, uh, you know, to us to save uh, time and, you know, other people are still coming on to give their addresses too. So, Absolutely. please, uh, for the other councils that are coming on, uh, please just stick to the time. And, um, uh, okay, the court has said all your submissions and, okay, I think we can proceed from as the yeah, no. pieces. Thank you, Lord. As the cause please. Bailiff. Bailiff. Okay. Um, the counsel for the defendant um, will be in Safari with Prince Edith. Thank you, my lord. My lord, uh, before I proceed, I'd love to ask if I'm on record. Of course, you're on record. Of course, he's recording you. And um, I think you should ask if we can hear you. Can you hear me, my lord? Loud and clear. We can hear you. We can proceed. There's some buffering, but I can hear you. Unfortunately, Just I don't know why my camera movement. is not coming. Um, Kindly okay. limit your hand movements, you know, because of the, um, you know, your hand movements on your computer or on papers, how you shuffle paper, so we can hear you clearly. Thank you, my lords. Right. My lords, 
with due respect to this honorable court, appearing before you is G. Lister Esquire, lead counsel to the defendants in this matter. My Lord's counsel is not here. G. A. Watts. G. A. Watts. Sorry. G. Lister Esquire. G. E. or G. A. G. -E. Audio, we can't your... hear you. Yeah, we can't hear you. The audio is making a very buffery. There's some E or A, E for Echo or A for Apple. Egg. 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 Okay, what is your surname? Lista. Yeah, I can see it. As Team Sapphire, defend on. Yes. Yeah? I think I'm okay. Okay, I'm okay too. Okay. Yeah, you can proceed and try and be audible too. My Lord, council is not here. Solitude. As council is also E. I. Elijah S. Fire. My Lord, yours faithfully, we are council representing the defendants in this matter. My lords, I'd also, before I proceed with um, giving a brief summary of the facts and issue in this case, I'd also love to point um, a preliminary objection as to um, what transpired before the commencement of, of this matter. My lords, um, as part of the rules of this competition, it was um, clearly stated in the mails we received that brief written addresses were supposed to be filed before the commencement of the competition, before the commencement of oral hearings in order for, to give the defendants the ability to be able to respond to whatever claims um, the claimant is making in regards to this matter. However, my lords, we didn't receive any statement of claim. We didn't receive any reason of address from the claimant in this matter. But however, my lords, um, we've been able to um, raise up issues for, um, for determination in this honorable court, if um, my lords would permit me to do so. Did you um, equally file yours and serve on the plaintiff? My Lord. Hello, Chief. In the uh, face of a preliminary objection, you would be expecting a ruling of sorts. And I would look at it that, um, that um, in raising that preliminary objection, you are stating that um, you are following the rules and the rules did not say particularly that it was going to be um, vis a vis it will be pre um, it will be done simultaneously if we are going to follow that rule so pri primarily you are telling me that you are coming with clean hands are you your logic but also if we deliver the court i would like to also uh, not leave yet i've addressed counsel i would like to hear from him first okay, before okay. we proceed are you coming with clean hands am i to perceive that you have filed and you served Fine, yeah, as before. as the in line with what the the mail you got said please um can you uh, um please your honor just hold on a little bit um ever sam is there a phone close to your, your close system to is, you. there, is there a mobile phone yeah. close to you you can move it far from the system you are using because just the sound move it away. Oh, yeah. is there a sound system around you is there a sound system is there, is there a speaker a speaker is sound is your connection okay your network connection is it okay I think that sounds better. Can we no, hear you? The is off. They took off their sign sound now. Yeah, oh, your they microphone is off. They can so hear guess... us, but they can we can't. Can hear you hear them. us? Can no, you unmute you. yourself? Unmute yourself. Because they took out their sound completely. Okay, so I think it has um it has to do with the system they are using. That's okay, let's easy. let's see how we can manage through this. Go ahead, please. Okay, I are you um are we going to assume that you have done the needful that's why you are raising the issue now because that was simultaneous if i understand that i asked those questions at the beginning because i wanted to be on the same page as all of you 
I didn't just ask them for phone. Did you did you um file? My lords, my lords, we didn't file because we we're expecting to receive the statement of claim from them from the other council the other divide, my lords. Uh, in the spirit of the of the competition and in line with the directive, I don't think it was simultaneous. Because their, their addresses are being filed particularly for the judge's appreciation. Yes, so not for, I'm telling not you, for personal not, exchange between uh, parties. Exactly. So it was supposed to be simultaneous. And so um, I would like to point out at this stage that um, that your preliminary objection will not, we have to be overruled. I, I don't know how my brother judge sees it, but you have to look at it. Uh, Lordship, please, please, can we direct the court properly? Because council is saying something that is not the rule at all. And we don't know um, why. Council, we, we don't intend to. Uh, in order not to waste our time, the court has already overruled his uh, uh, yes. objection or yes. submission. Your Lordship, I just wanted to point out something that is the rule in the competition with the kind of the court, just a second or two. Lordship. Um, you have not been given that. Uh, 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 you have well, not. My lord has spoken. Uh, I think we should proceed. The the application has um has already been overruled and um, and struck Council out. Yes. The, and struck out and council can proceed with the submission. Face the face the meat meat of your contention today, please. Uh, we don't want to go to the Supreme Court with this. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead, um, Lister. Lister. My lords. Thank you, my lords. But before going um, into the full portion of the issue, I would love to give a brief summary, a brief rundown of the facts and issue. What transpired from the year 1954? My lords, I would seek the leave of this honourable court to give a brief summary, if the court pleases. Okay. Actually, you can proceed. Be mindful of you, time. Because yes. your time started counting when you started speaking. The bailiff too is called to um, to address to uh, address this issue of timekeeping, please, so that we can be on the same page. Thank you. Thank you, my lord. My lord from the year in the year 1954, there was actually a contract that was entered into between the claimant and the defendant's father in this matter. The contract was actually a customary tenancy agreement that was entered with a strict specification as to what the land should be used for. It was agreed by both parties, my lord, that this land should be used for, the, for a palm plantation for an indefinite period of time. My lords, in the year 1987, there was actually an investment made by the claimants in the palm plantation of the defendant's father, where 20% of the annual crop harvest was demanded as payment for the contract or as a consideration or as an obligation in that particular contract. My lords, in the year 1989, the claimant's father, Mr. Wariapu, died. And actually, to continue this, to continue this show, this, this show of obligation, the, the defendants in this matter put forward and took forward the obligation, performing it to the latter. And in the year 1998, my lords, this particular contract of investment had ended. But my lords, something happened nefariously in the year 1999. In the year 1999, the claimants came with a claim saying that there had been an unpaid, a history of unpaid rent from the defendant's part. That the only thing that was only done by the defendants was only to pay a, 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 a cola fee, which was actually um, a form of constitution as actually established by the custom and tradition of the eastern part of Nigeria. My lord, that was not all. In the year 2002, my client, the defendant, actually, because of his failing health, had to take a, a, take a long walk out of the country for medical tourism in the overseas. And my lord, why this transpired within the space of three years before the year 2004, the claimants of this country went into the land of the defendant, and my lord, plucked out, my lord, have bested the palm fruits in this and also went as far as selling this particular produce. My lord, that was not, the, that was not all. In the year 2004, the, the, the claimants in this matter also went further by, by leaving out a portion of this particular land to um, a certain person called Mr. Okun. 
I got to my clinic, my clients came back to the country, they all struck, I was surprised and shocked to what happened to his land at that particular moment. And, you know, a huge controversy bellowed out of the air, and so many things happened. And my Lord, in the year 2016, it was revealed expressly by the facts of the, issue, by the, facts of the case that the claimant in this context, in a way to eject the tenant, instead of seeking the full arms of the law, went as far as hiring talks to send out the claim out of the land in which he inherited from his father as um, a, a, with a, with a right of exclusive possession therefrom. My lords, it is this fact of the issue that we have come to this honorable court, to your hand chamber, to seek redress, to seek relief be granted, and also to justice be made. My lords, five issues have been distilled accurately by the defendant counsel, and my lords, I as lead counsel will be taking from issue one to issue three, and co-counsel EI Elijah will be taking from issue four to issue five. My lords, I would love to proceed with issue one as a court. Uh, before you proceed, can you list out the issues? First issue is issue one. And issue one, whether or not there was a valid customer tenancy agreement between the claimant and the defendant in this matter, and that the later the latter's payment of colonel or offering of cancel, is cancel, valid... hold on. You need to understand that the court is writing and uh, you Recording. need to take it very slow. And we're here. So you need to understand that. Okay. okay Can my... you take issue one again? Okay, my lord. Well, there was a valid agreement. That the... And that the latter's option of the not is sufficient consideration on that customized land. My lord. Okay. On issue two, my lord, the issue given for content is that whether by the strict application of what the circumstance and facts of the case, there has been a waiver over the obligation upon the tenants to pay rent. Whether there has been a waiver. There's been a waiver of the tenants to pay rent. Okay. On issue three, my the issue for uh, is Sorry, I don't know if my learned brother is getting the issues. I think she's trying to change devices. She's here. Okay. Yeah, yes, you can I added then. another device so that um, you can get a visual okay. on me. I noticed that okay. the, we're having issues with other devices. Okay. Yeah, we can. I can, you can see, see me. Clearly. Thank you, gentlemen. Your issues, you need to take them slowly. You can go to the second issue, I guess. My learned yeah. brother, are you fine with his issue oh, one? It, it, yes. Yes, I am. Um, I was asking if you are good with the issue too. Okay, I missed out on that. Okay, you can start all over again. Don't worry, we'll add the minutes to your time. Okay, thank you. Hello, it's for that vision. Well, minute two one. Each of the time, when the customary tenancy agreement between the claimant and the defendant. And the latter's, that means the defendant in this case, the latter's payment or offering of cola not is sufficient consideration on that customary land law. Proceed. Then. My lot of issue two, the issue for contempt is that whether whether by the act of waiver, I was whether whether by the act of waiver found in the circumstance and fact of the case, the payment, the obligation to pay rents by the defendant 
was actually annulled or negated. Manos, can I proceed with issue three? Yes, you can proceed from here. My lords, in issue three, that whether by the fact and circumstance of the case, whether whether by the act of the claimant in selling off, in harvesting and selling off the, the, the palm produce in the farm, and also leasing out that partic a particular portion of land belonging to the defendants in this case, and also going forward to clear that land, whether it suffices for a trespass to land. And so, are you raising issue or you are giving an explanation? You need to um, let your issues be concise and um, because the way you are stating them, you are not really getting them down as you're okay. supposed to. I'll take it again, my lords. Okay. Issue in issue three is whether, whether claimant is selling up in in um selling of the property in leasing out the property to a certain Mr. Okon and also going forward to clear out the land and also um plucking up the palm harvest and also selling it amounts to trespass under the law. Okay. Issue four. Lords, in issue four, defendant is bound by the covenants running through the land, the only use seen for plantation. Whether the defendant is bound, is bound by the covenants running through with the land for only for plantation. Okay. My lords, in issue five, whether the whether the act of the plaintiff in hiring thugs to eject the defendants from the land is legal and constitutes a valid ejection under law. Okay. Thank you, my lords. My lords, lead council will be majoring on issue one to three, while co council EI Elijah will be majoring on issue four to five. My lords, the argument on issue one is as follows whether or not there is a valid customary tenancy agreement between the claimant and the defendant, and that the latter's payment or offering of cola is valid constitution on that customary land law. My Lord, I'd move forward on the floor to make a submission in this case, that this council humble submission that by clear an existence, by clear existence of adequate consideration, that there was an existence of a valid customary tenancy agreement between the claimants and the defendants in this matter. My Lord, I'd love to also move forward by giving you the definition given in the case of Akim Bade against Obatundi, a Supreme Court, a case of the Supreme Court cited in the year 2008, where the, where the court opined succinctly that customary tenancy involved the transfer of interest in land from the customary landlord to the tenant, which interest entitles the land to an exclusive possession of the land subject to good behavior. He holds this in perpetuity. 
My Lord, I also want to take you also on a, on a, I also want to take you to the case of Dashi against Satlon, which was decided by the Supreme Court in the year 2009, where the court, in giving its own definition of what customary tenancy means, said that customary tenancy agreements involve the transfer of an interest in a land from the overlord to the tenant, which authorizes the customary tenant to achieve possession of the land ad infinitum, which means that it endures forever, pending the obligation, pending, pending when, the, when the defendant chooses to forfeit such customary land. My lords, counsel, of the, counsel for the defendants were drawn to a particular claim made by the, defend, by the claimant's counsel, where he said that this particular agreement is a collateral tenancy. And my lords, I would also love to point to this court that it should be corrected because from the case of Uchenna against Uchenna in the year 1965 and the case of Mojeku against Mojeku, clear distinctive principles were given as to what a customary tenancy is in distinction from a cooler tenancy. My lords, I would also love to refer you to the work of Professor Dorothy Udo, who gave a succinct explanation as to what cooler tenancy is in relation to a customary tenancy agreement. That in cooler tenancy, there is actually no limit as to what the land should be used for. And secondly, in courts, in, in collateral tenancy, it is also defined that a tenant can, ask, can actually lease out this particular land to a third party without even getting the consent or getting the consent of the overlord or the landlord. My lord, in this case, it is not similar because you can see that from line one to two, it was vividly clearly stated by the fact sheet that this land was given by the claimant to the defendant to ensure that he uses it for a strict use, which is farm plantation, and for an indefinite period of time in this context, depending to how much he abides by the terms and obligation of this con of the contract. My Lord, after clarifying the court on this, I'd love to move further into proving whether there's actually a customary tenancy agreement between these two parties. My Lord. Professor Dorothy in our work actually stated that to prove the existence of a valid customary tenancy agreement, there has to be two major elements or two ingredients which has to be, which has to be proven by, 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 and by, by a party, which is that the first element is that there must have been a grant. And the second element is that there should, there should have been a valid vivid consideration which flows with the grant. My lords, I would also want to first of all, give my explanation of what a grant is. The Black Scott Dictionary defines the grant as an agreement that creates a right of interest in favor of a person or that affects the transfer of a right from one person to another. My lords, furthermore, Okafo and Atuaka in their work, Land Law in Nigeria, citations did provided in the, in the defendant's in the defendant's view of argument that customary tenancy arises where the landowner grants to the tenant an interest in the land in return for the grantee's tenant acknowledgement of the overlordship of the grantor. My lord, you can see in this particular scenario that two dominant words are very um, notorious in here. The word grant, grant, grantor, and grantee. And so it, it makes us understand that there is actually, that customer tenancy involves a grantor-grantee relationship. I also want to refer this quote again to the work of O.M. Omwa Mebu, where he further opined in his work that customary tenancy involves a grantor-grantee relationship, that the grantee holds a determinable interest in, in the land in question. My lords, I would want to also refer you to line one and two of the fact in issue, where it was stated uh, David. Cancel, are you um I, I don't mean to cut you, but I hope you are watching the time. So you are, if you are still on issue one by now, I think you should be rounding up. My lord, council is properly guided. My lords, okay. One on line two, because it, this particular there was, there was an offer from the claimant to the defendant's father in that case, and so it suffices as a grant under this particular provision. I also want to move down to consideration where the blast additional defines consideration as an act of forbearance or return promise but gained or received by the promisor from the promisee, which motivates a person to do something. My Lord, Professor Dorothy also commented that a customary, for a customary tenancy to be established, there has to be the proof of these two elements, that the grant existed and also that the consideration was also made, my Lord. 
And also in line three, it is vividly discovered here that one of the eastern parts of Nigeria, the custom per prevalent over there is that whenever a customer tenancy agreement is to um, exist or come to life, there has to be a transfer of cola or probably anything which will suffice as that, like hot drink or anything. My lords, in this case, the defendant validly gave a cola note to the claimant before he took possession of this particular land in question. My lords, I would also love to um, bring before the court that with the satisfaction of these two elements here given to the court, it is vivid and clear that there have been existing a valid customary tenancy agreement between the both parties and that the payment of consideration suffices, the payment of cola not suffices for consideration on that customary My lord, counsel would also love to proceed to issue two. You can proceed. My lords, in issue two, the question here is that whether or not, whether or not, whether or not the act of waiver, whether or not the act of waiver by the defendant, the claimant in this case, by the circumstance and facts of this case, the, 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 the claimant had waived the obligation of the defendant to pay rent as a venture. My lord, this council submission. That by to be, to be to review the evidence for that, the subject of rent as a basis for customer tenancy agreement was waived in congruence with this particular agreement. My lords, I also love to bring you the, the, the words of the Supreme Court in the case of Akim Bade against Batundi. I would read verbatim, my lord, where it says that the payment of tribute is the main gist in a customer tenancy agreement, which allows tenants exclusive possession to inure at infinity. However, my lord, there is an exception as pointed by the Supreme Court that the payment of tributes can be waived, which implies that non payment of rent does not make the agreement void as long as the situation has been offered. My lord, in the case of the Kujevo against Sagi, the Court of Appeals said that tributes or rent is not paid annually. And it's not it's not paid and, and it's not evidence of a customary tenancy that it can never be used as an evidence of a customary tenancy. Furthermore, my lords, Professor Dorothy in her work said that existence of rent is not only preceded by negotiation and a related understanding between both parties. And the case, my lords, I also love to refer to the fact sheet that while there was an agreement made by both parties in this context. There was no agreement in the earlier in the earlier form in the inception that there should be a payment of rent or trips. In this case, my lord, there was no payment of rent or trip. There was no agreement by the claimant to put forward in the, the term of agreement that there should be a payment of rent or tribute. The disposition of the claimant, Mr. OKK, may be seen in the light of the one of the Supreme Court, where he said that after all, the payment of tributes could be owned, could be owned by the landlord who has new kindness. That means by reason of the kindness of the claim, by himself to allow the defender not to pay tribute to this cause. And my lords, I'm trying to point to the point because that there is, there was no agreement made by both parties that payment of rent should be made. My lords, as you without conceding that rents were agreed upon, the court in marking day against Akin Wale, that's the case cited in 2000, the year 2000. The court opined that it is that it is it's non-payment that the non-payment of rent will not render the customary tenancy void ab initio, stating that the payment of tribute is not an invariable practice in customary land tenancy. My lords, in the case of Akin Lagun versus Ushuba, the case cited earlier, earlier ago, the payment of tribute in this case was recognized as a condition recognized as a condition of customary tenancy, and the court also opined that it is not always so, and for all time it may be waived. For example, where the rent is overlooked by the overlord for some reasons best known to him. My lords, in this case, I would love to pinpoint here that in the facts and issue, it was clearly stated that there was no real agreement as that the rent that should be paid. And it would be in my honest belief that the claimant in this matter had actually wanted that these particular um, actions, this particular rent be waived by, by both parties in the co contract. My lord, it is a humble submission in this case that by the circumstance and the fact of the case in issue, there was no, there was a waiver of the obligation to pay rent by the defendants in this matter. My lord, counsel seek the leave of this honorable court to proceed with issue three. Mm -hmm. 
council would love to proceed. I think um I think the microphones are mute. Um council just um yeah, um, well, you okay. can proceed, yeah, please. Proceed. You may yeah. proceed. Uh, I don't know how we became muted. <laughs> we, were being, we, were, we were listening. Uh. Proceed, proceed, please. My Lord, whether the act of the claimant, whether the act of the claimant, whether the act of the claimant in going to the land and harvesting the palm produce of the land and go there on selling the particular palm produce and also moving forward further as going to um, lease out a particular portion of land to set Mr. Oko suffices for trespass to land in customary land there. My lords, council submits on the form that the act of the claimant, OKK, in giving a portion of the land made subject to customary tenancy agreement to Okon and subsequent destruction of other palm trees, harvesting and selling the palm nuts during the defendant's medical tourism constitutes a trespass to land. My lords, according to Dave in Fekimo, the principle of law covering customary tenancy is that where strangers or immigrants are allowed to take over the land or allowed in customary tenancy agreement to occupy a land, there is a grant that there should be an exclusive right to the use of that land, an exclusive position of the use of that land. My Lord, in the case of the of possession are conveyed to the grantees. That means the full rights of possession are conveyed and it is actually protected by the law, which means there can be no interference by the claimant in this particular matter. My Lord, I would love to give you the definition of possession. A customer, there, there are actually two elements for the proof before trespass in this case must be grounded. The first is possession, the second is inter interference. My Lord, in possession, the customer tenancy holds right to the exclusive possession of the land in REM. In REM, it means that, it means that he, he holds a right to the land against the entire world. That means nobody, including the overlord, can trespass into that land or interfere with his enjoyment of that particular land. My Lord, I would love to refer you to the case of Dash against that long, where the court opined, and I quote, which interest entitles, that means in customary tenancy, the three interest entitles the customary tenant to exclusive possession of the land. In this matter, my lords, there is also an impossible, um, also an impossible claim against the entire world. My lords, the Blaster Dictionary defined exclusive possession to be the exercise of dominance, including the use and benefit of the property. My lord, the courts in Akim Bade against Obatundi said, that where customary tenants are granted, where customary tenancy is granted, the customary tenant is entitled to continue in peaceful enjoyment until they forfeit their right on such ground. My Lord, in the case, in, in, the, in, the, in the instance case, it is vividly revealed that there's actually a, a person of right, a person of possessory right to the defendant in this matter. And also, it was also strictly stated in line 13. In line from in line 13 to 14, where the, the defendant also are claimed asserting that his right to possession is in full force and cannot be endangered by any other person. And in that case, the law the, the claimant in that matter went as far as interfering the lands or the rights of the property by the defendant. My lords, I also want to tell you, I want also want to leave this court on, on the issue of interference. That before also, trespass can be granted, also. there has to be interference. Council, um, you should be wrapping up. You have barely two minutes, if I'm correct. And Elijah hasn't come up yet. So how do you intend to do this? Hmm? Let her have a bite of the cherry, perhaps. Uh -huh. I think it's high point you allowed her to have a bite of the cherry. Let her deal with her point. Otherwise, she would not okay. speak at all. It means you have to add, jump to the fourth point. I don't know, my brother, George, what are your feelings on that? Yeah, I think uh, I'm aligning with you on that because uh, the, he has taken most of the time and I think the other council should proceed with the fourth and fifth issue if they still have time to do that. Because they have just barely two minutes, I think. Okay, 
Well okay. done, Council. Um, Mr. That's Elijah, it. you can proceed. Yeah. Thank you very much, my lord. I'll be answering issue four. And issue four whether in the light of the facts of the case, the defendant is bound by the covenant running with the land to only use same plantation. My Lord, it is a general rule, the general rule that every tenant in a customary agree agreement has duties and rights. My Lord, one of the duties of a legal of a customary tenancy is duty to use the property in the process, in the purpose agreed by the guarantor. My Lord, the guarantor, according to the case of according to the case of Ago against Oboke, it was explained further that. That customary tenancy, if where the where the um, where the tenancy where the tenant refuses, where the tenant breaches breaches the purpose of of the of the contract, it is going to be held in breach of customary tenancy where he uses the the property for a purpose different from what the the grantor has agreed. My lord. That's the general principle. Okay, can you give us the case again? You said the case of Agu against what? Agu against Ogoke. Yes. Ogoke. My Lord, to every general principle, there is an exception. In this matter, my Lord, that, that means that where, where a to every general principle, there, there is an exception. That means that where a property is used by the tenants against the, the grantor's against the grantor's agreement, he is not, it is not going to be said to be a breach of contract if and only if the purpose for which the tenants use the property. Was not did not did not suffice to bring about a permanent injury or jeopardy to the title or to the land of the grantor in the agreement. My lord, to push further, in the case of Ochoma against Unisi, Unisi, it was held that. What uh, year is this case? For a different purpose from that which the overlord agreed. agreed Miss Elijah, what year is your case? Okay, ma. Okay, my lord. It is the case of Ochoma against Unisi. What year was it? Um, Decided. You don't. Do you have the citation? Yes. Yes. Nineteen eighty-five. One nine what? Nineteen sixty-five. One nine sixty-five. Okay. Okay. Proceed, you can proceed. You don't have time. Mm, don't have time, just go on. Okay, my lord, thank you, my lord. Okay, I was saying that in the case of Ochoma against Unisi, it was held that here a customary tenant used the land for a different purpose from that which the overlord, from that which the Overlord had initially agreed in such a way that it constitutes a permanent injury to the land. The grantor may bring an action for damages. My Lord, the element for this is that the, the other purpose for which
which the tenants use the land for must constitute a permanent injury. And my lord, it doesn't suffice for a, a breach of customary tenancy. My lord, to push further, it is, it is, it is not going to be wrong for one to accept that. Customary tenancy, customary tenancy would not be breached if the if and if the tenant used the property for another purpose, it will not be breached if it doesn't cause permanent injury to the land. Amen. And also, if it doesn't cause if it doesn't cause danger to the title of the of the of the grantor. My lord, by this principle, it means for the for the rights, for the duty of a tenant to use a property in the prescribed purpose as agreed by the grantor. Council, if you can hear me, I would, I would like you to proceed to the fifth issue because your time is Sorry, my lord. exactly in two minutes. Bruce, just talk about the issue so that we can round up can you hear me issue five your next issue and wrap up oh my lord i, I wasn't done with the score. we know that but your time is up we're giving you time, time to go already. to go to the next Talk one so that you would have submitted point. properly otherwise we'll just cut you off at this point and move them um, to the next set so you must be, be most grateful to my brother George and myself for giving you extra time to just wrap up. That's what it is. As the Lord pleases. As the, as the Lord pleases. Yes, go on. If you are done, we can actually wrap up now. On issue five. Yes. Okay. I think they are. They are. They are. On issue five. In hiring talks to evict the defendant from the land is legal and constitutes a valid ejection. My Lord, the law, the law is claimed that the major incident of customary tenancy is the recognition of the right of the overlord to the title of the property. The fact is that the customary tenancy goes in perpetuity unless and until the, tenant, the tenancy is forfeited. My Lord, the, 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 the cause in the case of Ejio Mahoni, against Emma GOBK, explain this principle further. My Lord, forfeiture had been explained by in the case of Oku Pala against Oku, that forfeiture derives from the word forfeiture. The word means forfeiture of being the I think um, I can't hear them. My Lord, they, they, are, can I I. Network, their network is um, uh, fluctuating, yes. I guess. He ought to follow prescribed steps and methods to apply to the court for an order of forfeiture in order for him to gain recovery of his possession in the land. I think unfortunately we have to we have to wrap up now. The, That's yes. true. Um, please wrap up, Team Sapphire. Can you wrap up? Okay, my lord. Make your final submission to the court, please. Okay, my lord. My, my final submission to the court is that the plaintiff in this matter did not take reasonable steps. He only took autom He only took his right of forfeiture automatically, which is against the law, my lord. And this has been expanded in the case of Ajay Anye against Uche Bajo. Under this principle, my lord, it is necessary to point to the fact that the, the equity, the rules of equity that has to do with when the, when the plaintiff is 
coming to court, who, he who comes to court to equity, to claim for equity, must come with clean hands. My Lord, it is true in this case that the plaintiff did not, did not come to court with clean hands because of his past actions with the in transaction between him and the tenants. That's my submission, my Lord. So you have no prayer for the court to grant? You have just made a submission. Um, main, main um, counsel, um, if you can just um, chip in that word. Um, your prayer is what? Thank you, my Lord. My Lord, the prayers, our prayers goes thus, that first of all, um, damages should be granted to the defendant for the... Do you have a counter, do you have a counter claim? I think maybe um, at the end you of the... have a counter claim? Yeah, okay. I just want to know at this stage just, if you are if you are asking for damages, go ahead then. Okay. Continue. But secondly, my lord, our, our, our prayer is that a grant an injunction should be placed on the government for him not to step foot in the land in which our clients hold the possess possessory title to. Those are our prayers. Okay. Very well. Well done to all of the parties. Moderator, baby. Okay. Um. Thank you very much. We're about to call the group B um team. Um. The matter before us again is between uh, okay. Okay. Um, Bailey, hold on. Um, Lord, she has something to say. Hold on, Bailey. Okay, I on. think before you call the next thing, we need to um, appreciate um, the the council on the on the both side. Yes. Okay, you want to go first, or? Okay, well, please, you can proceed, my uh, ladies first. Uh, no ladies. <laughs> 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 thank you thank you my brother um i'm i'm really i must state that i'm very happy with the quality of arguments that we've had today first of all i want to commend the the um, organizers of this um program for this mood um, this uh, program that we are, we are having today this competition it's epic it's innovative it's visionary Yes, the pandemic came, but with it came a lot of um, work um, of um, virtual innovations that are taking us further. Um, it would have taken us. It would have taken us um, more more time um, to put, put this, this together, together, but it saved a lot of time, and we're happy for that. I, I must come in the. Yeah. Let me take a. Your mic is your microphone is mute. It's on mute, please. Or can you unmute one of your microphones? I know you have to um just one, one of devices. Them. Yes. Yes. I okay, have to ahead. take one. But let me see. Yes, we can hear you now. We can hear you. Okay. okay. So, so um, can you hear me now? We can hear you on one. Which is fine. We can hear you on yeah, one. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So we want to commend the participants for working so hard. Um, I can see the amount of research that went into the, your work. Mm, we commend your your advocacy skills that are developing and on you the very best going forward. And um, do not relent. We you notice the way we chastised you a bit. It's part of it, or oh, it helps you grow. Thank you for participating and thank participating and thank you for having us. I'm talking about the foundation. It's really um, an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um. Uh, in order to add to what my learned brother has said, I'm not. Going, I don't want to to take much of our time. I actually am throwing the line of uh, what she has said. Uh, we really appreciate all the speakers, all the council, and um, uh, they have done really well. I just want to 
tip in that um, you should be conscious of time uh, in a competition like this. You should try to marshal your point and go straight to the point instead of just, um, you know, you, uh, since you have a written address and you're submitting it, you don't to summary. Cite all the cases. Just summarize. And when you are, you know, you, you explaining the issues, you just need to summarize and just give out your point and just move to the next one. So I hope the next team, the next set will, will understand this better and they will work on the presentation. And um, kudos to the foundation, kudos to my learned brother. You are doing a great. pleasure to meet you online. <laughs> <laughs> okay, please, we can Thank proceed. You. Belief. Belief. So our belief Thank here. You. Thank you very yes. much. Thank oh, you. I was taking a break, break to save some processes. <laughs> um, we're about to take the uh, participants. Um, okay. The matter before us is still um, Mr. KK as a plaintiff and uh, Mr. Obi as a defendant. Um, the team Ruby will take over, will represent uh, Mr. KK, while uh, Team Emerald will be the defendant of um, Mr. Obi. As usual, each um, um, team has 15 minutes. First speaker will have 15 minutes and the second speaker 15 minutes, the same with other um, um, team. So we will allow um, team Ruby to Respectfully, your lordship, can I be heard? You can, you can proceed. Thank you, your lordship. Respectfully, your lordship, commencing appearance is P. Chima. Chima is spelled C H I M E. Your Lordship, in this said matter between OKK and Obi, which is for which has been mentioned and which is for Yeri, I appear alongside my learned co counsel K T Philip. Your Lordship, K T Philip. May I proceed, Your Lordship? Yeah, you can proceed. Thank you, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, for the said case before the Honorable Court, with distinct issues which, the, which will be premising our submissions on, and Your Lordship, further, pursuant to the rules of this court, which says that teams should address jurisdiction, we shall also address this court on its jurisdiction. I would like to point out that in our memorial, which we are going to submit to this court, according to the rules, we, we have brought the suit before the Edo State High Court. Your Lordship, with your kind leave, I would like to read out the issues which will be distinct for determination. Proceed, please. Thank you, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, the first issue has to do with jurisdiction, and it reads, whether the Edo State High Court has the jurisdiction to entertain this suit, which we are premising on customary tenancy, and we utilize seven minutes for this particular issue. Your Lordship, the next issue, which is the second issue, is, may I proceed? Please, we'd like to see your video while that is going on, please. For record purposes, please. I'm sorry, my video went off. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry okay. my video went off. Yes. For the second issue is, what is the nature of the transaction between Okeke and Wariaku? Lordship, the third issue is. Can I be heard, Your Lordship? Yeah, we are writing, so please take it a bit slower. Study us when we raise our heads and look at you. You know, take it as a cue that we have yeah. finished writing. Can you repeat, uh, the second issue. Your Lordship, the second issue is what is the nature of the transaction between OKK and Wariaku? Yes, the second issue. What is the nature of the transaction between OKK and Wariaku? May I proceed? I am. Thank you, your lesson. The third issue is whether the use of the said land given to Wariaku by Obi, who is his son, 
for purposes other than that, which, was, which the land was given for, amounts to abandonment in law. Can you go over that again? Yes, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, whether the use of the land by OB for purposes other than that, which the land was given for, amounts to an abandonment in law. I got that, sir. Your Lordship, may I proceed? Okay. May I proceed to the second issue, to the third issue, rather, the fourth issue? Thank you, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, the fourth issue is as to whether Obi challenged the title of, of OKK, hence amounting to forfeiture. Whether the beast challenged okay. Yes. Sorry, can you... Whether Obi challenged amounting to forfeiture. Of title. And lastly, the fifth issue is whether OB use of the land for setting up a pure water factory amounts to a forfeiture in law. Thank you, Your Lord. No, there's no other issue, just five issues. Your Lordship, at this point, I seek your kind leave to defer proceedings to my learned co counsel to argue on the first issue, which has to do with the jurisdiction of the Edo State High Court, where we brought this suit before, as regards customary penalty. Um. Entering appearance, entering appearance before this honorable court is P.K. Philip. P.K. Philip, counsel for the, for the plaintiff. Your lordships, I shall be conversing and addressing issue one, which is whether the Edo State High Court has jurisdiction over this case. I seek the leave of the court to proceed to, the, to my argument. You can proceed. Go ahead. In Nigeria, jurisdiction is granted by the Constitution. That is to say, it is the 1999 Constitution that defined jurisdiction for various courts. And the same Constitution created superior courts of record. And it also gives the House of Assembly of of a state, the power to create such other courts as is needed in that state. In line with this, section six sub five paragraph K of the 1999 constitution gives the national and uh, the state house of assembly the power to create other courts, uh, to create courts other than the ones list, uh, listed under section six of the 1999 constitution. So in line with this, Many states as of assembly, almost all states of as of assembly, created courts known as customary courts and area courts. However, it is when it comes to the courts of record, it is section six of the 1999 constitution that creates these courts. In line with this, section six of the 1999 constitution created state high court. Particularly under section 270, it created state high court. And under section 200, it gives high court jurisdiction, different jurisdiction of state high court. Under this section, under section 272, state high court has unlimited jurisdiction, subject to section 251, which is the jurisdiction of federal high court. So the jurisdiction of state high court. Is not subject to the one of the 1999 Constitution. The first of this case 
I'm losing audio on him. Can someone have their phone on silent? Please. Okay. That's what the interference we're getting. I think you are using you are using your phone. Philip is you are using your phone. So um kindly um turn down the volume of your phone so that it doesn't ring out when you are speaking. Like the ringtone, you can you I can think it's down, the person beside the him. <laughs> Baba, okay. no. Go ahead. So your lordships, there has been contention whether the area court as a step as established by section C sub five of the 1999 uh, constitution, whether the area court also the jurisdiction of state high court to entertain matters with regards to customary tenancy. And this particular challenge what section was the case are you of addressing, Adiza. please? Section of the constitution. I am addressing two sections of the constitution. Section C, sub okay, five, paragraph. I haven't paragraph heard it case. yet. I've okay. not heard anything. Se okay. The section in contention in this issue is section six, sub five, paragraph K, which gives the National Assembly power to create other courts, other than okay. the one listed under section C. And, and the second section, section two hundred and seventy-two, which gives or which okay, defines the jurisdiction of state thank high court. So the state high court, as I mentioned earlier, have unlimited jurisdiction. However, this unlimited jurisdiction was an issue of contention in the case of Adiza and Oyin Wola. Adiza is spelled as A-D-I-S-A. -A. Oyin Wola is spelled as O-Y-I-N-W-O-L-A. Citation duly provided in our written brief. In this case, there were two sections. Section, there were two sections of the Land Use Act that was in contention. Section 39 of the Land Use Act, which gives the state high court exclusive jurisdiction over matters of statutory right of occupancy granted by the governor of the state, and as well as section 41, which gives the area court and customary court or other courts of equivalent jurisdiction jurisdiction to entertain matters of customary tenancy. So it was the contention in this case that because this, the section 41 gives the customary court and area court jurisdiction to entertain matters of customary tenancy, it owes the jurisdiction, it owes the unlimited jurisdiction of the state high court to entertain such matter. However, the court in addressing this issue relied on canons of interpretation, particularly in the cases of Barrel and 4D. Barrel is spelled as B-A-R-R-E-L. While 4D is spelled as F-O-R-D-E-E. -E. And as well, the court relied on the case of yeah, R versus... Is that a Nigerian case? No, they are, they are English cases, your lordship. Okay, what year was it given? Okay, the case of Barrel and Fordy was decided in 1932. Appeal Court, AC, 67 at 6, 70, 76 at 682. Don't worry, go ahead, proceed, don't worry. Continue. All right. Thank you, Your Lordship. So they relied on this case to hold that when the legislature says one, when the, leg, the legislature should be taken to mean that only which they express. That is to say, if the legislature should say this is a boy, it means he is not a girl. However, if the legislature should say this is a child, it means it can either be a boy or a girl. So they apply this logic in this case to hold that section 39 used the word exclusive in granting the state high court jurisdiction over statutory tenancy. Therefore, it is only the state high court that have jurisdiction with, that, uh, with respect of that matter. However, coming down to Section 41 of that same land use act, it dropped the word exclusive. It merely allocated jurisdiction to states, uh, to area court and customary court. And as because it does not use the word exclusive, therefore, the state high court and as well the area court and customary court have concurrent jurisdiction 
with regards to matters of customary tenancies. And this particular decision in the case of Adiza was also affirmed in 2007 by the Supreme, by the Supreme Court in the case of Ade Tayo and Bami Dele. Ade Tayo. What year was this? It's, it's a 2007 case. Okay. So the earlier is this the one also, where you have your, are using seven minutes to talk your on it, your it, Yes, your lordship. Okay. Your lordship. Your lordship. May I be permitted to speak? Please, your lordship. Okay. I, as you should allow counsel, your colleague. Okay, but he's lead counsel, so he can interject. Yeah, I'm lead counsel, your lordship. As lead counsel, I would like my colleague, a millenary colleague, Philip Kepas, please kindly conclude your argument as your time is almost run out. Thank you very much. Okay. In summary, the state high court and area court, as well as the customary court, have concurrent jurisdiction. However, it is my submission at this point that it is the state high court that have jurisdiction over this matter because the jurisdiction of area court and customary court to entertain matters of customary financing is subject to some certain limitation. One of the limitations is that the governor of a state have the discretion to decide whether an area is urban area or rural area. Therefore, you will see a very developed area. The governor, because the, the, the area does not generate revenue, the, the governor will categorize it as a rural area. While you see a very undeveloped area, the governor will categorize it as an urban area. Therefore, this may affect the jurisdiction of the area court and as well the customary court because they only have jurisdiction with respect of matters that occur in rural areas. Another, another factor that may affect their jurisdiction is with respect Your of- Your Lordship. Your Lordship. May I address the court? Allow your, uh, your colleague to conclude. Oh, conclude. That was my first I, I am the lead counsel sir, for uh, this particular case. Uh, it doesn't matter. You should not interject. At every point in time. Yeah, a lot of it is, okay, I'm, I'm considering the time be that is detrimental to my client's case. Um, uh, you, your client should run off. You already interjected okay. last time. I will permit you. You shouldn't do that again. You are before you, uh, an honorable. As, as properly guided, your lordship, as properly guided. Okay. So, um, so Mr. Kepas, uh, please run off. Your time is almost up. In conclusion, your lordship, because of the limitation that the area court and customary court faces, it is more, it is legally wise to bring this matter before the Edo State High Court because it has unlimited jurisdiction and the characterization of rural or urban areas does not affect the State High Court in exercise of its jurisdiction. Neither does it have any limitation with regards to award of damages, which is the limitation with area court and customary court. So with this final submission, I pray this court to declare that it is the Edo State High Court that have jurisdiction to entertain this matter. So I can refer issue. proceeding to my, my, to my learned co-counsel to adumbrate on issue two. Your Lordship, respectfully, once more, Your Lordship, I'll adumbrate on issue two and issue three. I'll adumbrate on issue two and issue three. My issues two and three. With issue two, yes, issues two and three. My proceed with issue one, with issue two, rather. Thank you, Your Lordship. Proceed. Your Lordship. Your Lordship, issue two is as to what's the Wait, nature of Wait, my learned brother, I don't know. Answer etiquette, you look for a glass. You look for a glass. I when you want to drink. Your Lordship. When you want to have a drink. Are you off your video? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, yeah, in court. Okay, you can proceed. Uh, I was just getting the prayer. Thank you, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, the second issue is what is the nature of the transaction between Okeke and Wariaku? Your Lordship, it is the position of the law that to determine what is the nature of a transaction, of a land transaction, as in this case, 
We must look at the circumstances governing the making of such transactions. Your Lordship, premised on this, the plaintiff will be making submissions on two standpoints. One, that the transaction between OKK and Wariaku is not a lease. The second standpoint is that the transaction between OKK and Wariaku is that of a customary tenancy. Your Lordship, I should not begin with the first standpoint. Your Lordship, the first standpoint it is our submission pursuant to the case of Okechuku versus Onuora. It's a 2000 case, Supreme Court. May I proceed? Take the case again. Please, I take okay, Chuku. Yes, your lordship. Okay, Chuku and Onuora. Onuora. 2000. As properly guided, your lordship. 2000, right? Yes, Supreme Court. And also, your lordship, the case of Brusette Manufacturing Limited and Elemubola Limited. 2007 Supreme Court. Is that 2007? Yes, Your Lordship, 2007. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Thank you, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, in these cases, it was stated categorically that the features of a lease include certainty as to the duration of the grantee's interest Secondly, certainty as to the territory that has been given to the grantee or the leasee, as the case may be. However, your lordship, coming down to the case facts, it will take a look at line one and two and three of the case facts. It is stated there that OKK gave it from a large portion of the family for, from, of the family land to Wariaku indefinitely. Indefinitely, there is no definite period. And also, lordship, this land was given to Wariaku without the territory being known. It is premised on this that we are submitting that this particular transaction does not fit the feature of a lease, and hence the transaction is not a lease. Your Lordship, I shall now proceed to my second standpoint. My second standpoint is that the land transaction between OKK and Wariaku is that of a customary tenancy. Your Lordship. Honorable Justice Ume Zulike, in his textbook, ABC of Contemporary Land Law in Nigeria, the revised and the enlarged edition of his, his Lordship of Blessed Memory, stated in page 249 of the said textbook. May I proceed? Proceed. Yes, his Lordship, thank you, Your Lordship. He stated in, in page 249 that the features of a customer, te, customer tenancy includes when a land is given to a grantee for an indefinite period. Or secondly, when also when a land is given to a grantee and this land is not delimited, and also there's usually the feature of the payment of tribute, the lordship. This particular position that was stated in the textbook by Honorable Justice Umezuliki was affirmed, and the Court of Appeal relied, it, relied on it in the case of Asorebi versus Dada. 2020, this is a court of case, Asorebi versus Dada 2020. May I proceed? You may proceed. Thank you, Your Be Lordship. mindful of Lordship, your time. Position, yes, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, this position was relied in this set case, and also it was relied on the, in the case of Makinde and Akinwale 2000, Supreme Court. The citation for this case is in our brief, Your Lordship. That the feature of a customary tenancy is that there is no definite time and the area given is not limited, is, is not delimited. Your Lordship, now applying it to the case fact, it is obvious in paragraph two that OKK gave land, gave, gave from a large portion of the family land to Wariaku for, for an indefinite period. And further, the said piece of land given to him is not delimited. Hence, we are submitting portions to these cases that this falls under the feature of a customary tenancy. And we pray that this court resolve this issue in favor of the plaintiff. Your Lordship, I shall now proceed to the third issue. Your Lordship, the third issue is as to whether the use of the land by OB for a purpose are provided earlier to this court, the said issue. Issue three is as to whether the use of the land by 
but it will be for a purpose other than palm, palm tree farming amounts to abandonment law, your lordship. The portion of the law is that in customary tenancy, when a land has been given and it was specified the purpose it, it is to be used for, such purpose, such, such purpose has to remain and the grantee is obligated to use such land in that purpose only. Your Lordship, this, this position was upheld in the earlier 1926 case of Manuel and Manuel. Manuel and Manuel. Citation is in the plaintiff's brief. Your Lordship, and also the case of Otoma versus Unosi, 1965. Citation is in the plaintiff's brief, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, particularly the case of Otoma and Unosi, in this case, the respondent was given the land to use for oil pressing. And he decided to erect a building, despite the fact he was saying that he's using it for oil pressing, he said to erect a building to start selling cement. The Supreme Court ruled that by the fact he left what he was given the land for and erected a, a, a structure to start selling cement, he has forfeited his right due to the principle of abandonment. The Lordship, coming to the case facts, it is stated that it is stated in paragraph. In paragraph in line three, pardon, in line three of the case facts, that Wariaku offered Okeke Kolanos before he took that, that rather, it was agreed that the land would be used strictly for the cultivation of palm trees. Your Lordship, this satisfies the rule that when you are given a land, when you are given a land to a grantee under customary tenancy, that such land should be used for the purpose it was given. Your Lordship, Okeke gave the land to Wariaku to be used for the farming of palm trees. However, in 2016, Obi, who is the defendant before this court, went ahead to clear the palm trees and erected a, a, a pure water factory. Your Lordship, he erected a pure water factory. It is premised on this, that the plaintiff is submitting unequivocally before this court that Obi has forfeited his right due to the principle of abandonment in customary tenancy. And Your Lordship, we submit finally and we pray that this court resolve this third issue in favor of the plaintiff. With the kind leave of this court, I would like to defer proceedings to my learned co-counsel, Philip, to make submissions on issues, on issues four and five. Your Lordship, issue four has stated earlier concerns whether the defendant acts of alliance with a third party to dispossess and challenge the title of the plaintiff amounts to challenge of title of the landlord. Your Lordship, I shall be arguing this issue on two grounds. The first ground is that the act of the defendant is an express challenge of the title of the plaintiff who is the landlord in question. And the second ground is that he has, by his act, he has forfeited any interest he has on the land. Going to the first ground, which is that the act of the plaintiff amounts to an express challenge of the title of the landlord. It is against public policy and common sense for a tenant to challenge the title of his, of his landlord. It will amount to what a, the common man on the street calls, calls biting the finger that feeds you. And the law prohibits this. Even the common law is against such acts of tenants challenging the title of his landlord. And the principle under, and under the common law, it is against public policy. However, coming to our jurisdiction, which is Nigeria, challenge of the title of the landlord is not only against public policy, it is also against statutory provision, particularly under section 170 of the Evidence Act, which the, the Evidence Act couched it as a stopper of tenant. That is, the tenant is not allowed to challenge the title of his landlord. The, the evidence act- Is this your further. first issue is on estopel? Are you raising yes, your principle of estopel? Yes, your lordship. Okay. Proceed. As it, your, your lordship, the evidence act went further not only stop the tenant from challenging the title of his landlord, he also went for that to stop those claiming under the tenant, like sublety, sublety, and sub grantees of the tenant. They don't. They, they are also stopped from challenging the title of the landlord. Your lordship, the evidence act 
only states the prohibition of a tenant from challenging the uh, title of his landlord. It does not specifically define what acts amount to challenge of the title of the landlord. So we are left to resort to case law, judicial interpretation in various cases. Particularly in the case of Taiwo and Akin Wumi, this is a Supreme Court case, Taiwo and Akin Wumi. Fatai Williams, Justice of the Supreme Court, stated that there is no hard and fast rule as to defining when a misconduct amounts to challenge of the title of the landlord. Each case has to be decided on its own, on its own merit. However, he listed two factors that the court should consider in determining whether an act amounts to challenge of the title of the landlord. The first is the seriousness of the misconduct, and the second is the repetitive nature of the misconduct. As the repetitive nature of the misconduct, a trivial act, if done in such a repetitive nature, may amount to challenge of the title of the landlord, even though it's trivial. If it's done repeti uh, repetitively, most especially in cases where the landlord ob uh, objects to such act. On the seriousness... Your lordship. The bailiff is um, time, right? I cannot hear. Yes, I think the bailiff has um called for time. Time management. Time. Yes. It is their time up because I'm looking at it that three minutes, three minutes. Three minutes. Thank you, Bailiff. I seek the leave of the court to summarize my argument, Your Lordship. I don't breathe, please. Thank you, because Your Lordship. You're to... So, in the case of in the case of Onisiwo versus Bangui, it's a 1941 case decided by West African Court of Appeal. In this case, the act that amounts to challenge of the title of the landlord was cutting down of palm trees in the land. And as well, when the landlord approached the tenant, the tenant claimed that he is the owner of the land. The court held that this act amounts to challenge of the title of the landlord. And considering the fact of this case, particularly in line 13 to 17 of the case fact, it says that the, the defendant in alliance with a third party challenged the title of the landlord and call the landlord a mere speculator and a thief. Therefore, if the court in this case declared, in the case of Oniso, declared that the act of the defendant amounts to challenge of the title of the landlord, the court should as well declare in this case that the act of the tenant amounts to challenge of the title of the landlord. Likewise, in another case of Sani and Alhaja Al Adiza II, citation duly provided in our written memorial, the court was of the view that the act of the tenant of burying a stranger on a land and as well bringing down the building of the landlord and setting up a new building. And when the tenant, the tenant asserted that he is the owner of the land, the court held that it amounts to challenge of the title of the landlord. And as such, your lordship, considering the fact of this case, the defendant has asserted title to the land. And this particular act amounts to as amounts to challenge of the title of the landlord. And as such, it is my honor, it is my prayer before this court that the court should declare the act of the tenant, the act of the defendant in this case, as a challenge to the title of the landlord. And contrary to section 170 of the Evidence Act, and the court should declare that- Time is Time is up. Time is up. Can you just give, who is summarizing so we just get prayer? What's your prayer? Our prayer before this court in summary is, number one, that the court should declare that the act of the tenant is a challenge of the title of the landlord and the court should grant us two relief. The first relief is that the court should grant us an order of perpetual injunction against the tenant. And the second relief is that the court should grant an order of giving of possession against the tenant. Thank you. My learned brother, do you have anything else? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, no, okay. The, the two of them have tried and they, they look, 
after I've tried um, after maximizing the time that was given to them, uh, uh, I would still have to commend the school to for the school counselor. So I think you can proceed to the next one. I think we'll be expecting the next Bailey. team. The Bailey, Bailey. should introduce. Is that team Emerald? Is that team Emerald for the defendants? Yes, please. They seem to be here. Okay. Oh. You're about to call up team Emerald. Please, can we see? Okay, yeah. Uh, presentation. May it please the court. What is on our court is KM Ismail. KM Ismail. And appearing with me is QA Kori Ibrahim. And we announce our appearance as counsels to the defendant in this instant case. Counsel is counsel. Counsel to the defendant in this instant case. Thank you, Your Worship. Yeah. Uh -huh. The first one I book is a written address dated and found on the 30th day of June 2022. And contained in our written address is an introduction, a brief statement of facts, issues for determination arguments on all issues, some of arguments, our prayers before this honorable court, and list of authorities. You seek the Lord of course to continue. Your worship, this case, okay, the big, the big thing of fact is as follows. Okay, this family, gave a vast portion of land to the defendant, Obi, to the defendant's father, Obi, in 1954, in return of Kola, Kola no, it's a lot, your worship. And it was agreed between the defendant's father, Umariaku, and the family who happens to be the head, family head of the family, that the land in question will be used for consumption of farm fees. Subsequently, your worship, the land is the okay, 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 is of Fatima invested in the farm in the farming business. And it was agreed that the entitled to 20% annual farm harvest for 10 years. He invested in 1987. And the Nigerian father, Ruayaku, gave out this 20% from 1988 to 1997. So 1988 to 1997, that makes it 10 years. Then, therefore, the 20% the posted of 19, 1990, 1998, was for the photo Soon, Obi Shafi will not abort for the plaintiff pulled out part of the land, fled the palm tree on the land to open, and on return of the defendant, he, he cleared the palm tree on the many land and put a short of us money. Council, before you, I think we, the court is well abreast with the facts of this case. Yeah, uh, by now. We okay. can just go to the issues and just um, proceed with the issues. Mm, you yeah, identify the issues. Please, I'm out. One, whether or not of the defendant is in lawful possession of the, of the okay family vast of land. To your, your worship, whether or not Obi is bound by any convenience made on the land in his possession, the court is your worship, is 
Um, um, like we said, okay, okay. I don't know if you um, cancel. Okay, I don't know if you, yes, sir. If, you are, if you can hear us. We if you have joined us earlier when we addressed the other uh, participants the other time so we told them we are writing actually this issue is very important so you need to take it very slow for us to be able to write and because you're watching whether or not whether or not is in lawful possession of okay this family that's the second whether or not OB is bound by any confidence made on his possession. And the third issue, the third issue is whether or not Sorry, sorry. Um, can we get okay, the okay, second issue again? Me too, I didn't hear it. Whether or not um, okay. it's bound. Okay. Counselor, can you kindly um just stand still. Be, be still, be still in addressing in address or just be still rocking. Try not to, yeah. Stop rocking so um they can hear you. No distractions, please. Yes, thank you. I think it's your tick, so you can just maybe touch your hand or do something else um, so that it doesn't affect your presentation. You can wind your hand off camera if that's what helps you. Okay, we can proceed now. Well, or not. Okay, okay, can lawfully eject Obi, the, Obi from the land in dispute with iron of thoughts. Whether or not Okeke okay, okay, can lawfully eject or be from the land in dispute with iron of thoughts. So worship uh, with advancing arguments on issue one and issue three. Why my co-counsel, QA Ibrahim, with advancing convincing voters on issue two. I'll seek the of this court to perceive the argument. I can proceed. Go ahead. On issue one, it is the vehement potential that of the lawful possession of this family was portion of land for Lucidity and the little habits. We have stratified our argument on this first issue into two main standpoints. One, that Obi's father, Uwan Yaku, took possession of Okeke's family, vast portion of land in a lawful manner, portioned under the local tenancy. And on the second standpoint, is that Obi inherited his father's land in question lawfully under the color tenancy. On the first standpoint, we contend that Uwayaku took possession of Okeke's okay, okay, vast family vast portion of land in 1954 in a lawful manner, as it was given to him by the entire OKK family represented by the plaintiff OKK in return of Kolano, it a Kola tenancy. And it has been, 
and the third law that color tenancy as defined in section two of the color tenancy law. Have 69 laws of Eastern Nigeria, and as held in Supreme Court in Okeye Oyi Duogu. Okeye Oyi Duogu. This is how you spell it. Oyi Duogu. Okeye Oyi Duogu. Okeye Okeye Oyi Oyi Duogu. Oyi Duogu. Oyi Duogu. D-I-O. Say that. O-Y-I-D-I-O-B-O-B-U. O-Y-I-D-I-O-B-U. O-Y-I-D-I-O-B-U. Okay, thank you. D-I-O-B-U. Uh, okay. Say that. Okay, to do. A nice thing is okay. That color tenancy is a right to use and occupy any land by any person by invite of a cola all the token payments made by such person or any prisoner in, in tight to or by virtue of any grant for which no payment in money or in kind was enacted. That was the same OD in Mojeku, Mojeku, the worship. M O J E K W U K W U Mojeku versus Mojeku in 1997 case. Where the court held the same position. Mojeku. Looking at the fact of the court report, that Omaya took possession of the Okuke's family vast portion of land in 1954. After that, after such land was given to him indefinitely, in return of an of an, of, a, of colas, cola note offered to the family to is the representative of the family. That's the person who, who happens to be the family heir. And by and being in possession of such land, the is right to use and and it's as he has done from 1955 to 1989 when he died. And it's our submission on this standpoint that that Uwayaku or his father took question of this land in question lawfully. On the second standpoint, your lordship, lovely content that Obi inherited this 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 land the question in the law according to color tenancy the color tenancy who they see was us mogo who they who they see u g e n s i was us mogo m o g b o a nice case the court held that under the color land held under the color tenancy is 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 your worship your worship under the tenancy is inherited by the children of the deceased in production upon production of the succeeding charge of and accepted by the family of Fodder Cola. As long as the succeeding child produces a Fodder Cola, the land in question under the Cola tenancy is an inheritable. And that's what Obi has done. It's very evident from the fact that the 20 cent posted given to Okeke in 1980, in 1998, because his, his own personal agreement. His most personal investment in the business of 10 years ended in 1997. So the 20% policy in 1998 was to emphasize and was to establish and was to validate the land, the, the, the inheritance of the land by the defendant under the popular tenancy. And as such, the defendant has taken and took possession of inherited the land because of his father in the lawful manner that the popular tenancy and all the lordship to so old. On the on the all issues we 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 we, we submit on the all issues that on the all issue one that you know, we submit on the all issue one that Obi is in love question of Obi's family back to the land. I would like to divide proceeding to refer back to my post on this post to convert arguments on issue two. Thank you, Your Worship. With preferred respect, Your Worship. I am Q.A. Ibrahim. 
we strongly contend that Obi is not bound by any covenant made on the land in his possession, my lord. Your worship. In Mojeku versus Mojeku, in 1997 case, it was held that under Kola tenancy system, the tenant has a limited right of disposal. In other words, the Kola tenant enjoys all the rights of absolute owner, but not the right of absolute disposition. A Kola tenant has a transmissible right to his descendant, but the grantor in law, that is the grantor, retains a reversionary right, which is exercisable on the determination of tenancy. Because a Kola tenant enjoys the right of an absolute owner. He is not restricted in the use to which he may put the land, your worship. From the above judicial precedent of Mujeku versus Mujeku, your worships, it is the law that under a Kola tenancy, as in the instant case before this honorable court, the successor in the title of the deceased Kola tenant, Obi is under no duty, under no duty, bound by the covenant made by his predecessor, that is Inwariuku, his father, is not under it. It has been, it is, it is not under Obi at all. Also, my lord, in the case of Ostavery versus Corporation of Old House, Ostavery, A U S T E R B E R R Y versus Corporation of Old Ham, O L D H A M, the yeah. 95 case. 19 what? 1995 case. 1995 case. What court? London reports. London reports. I thought as much a common law. Go ahead. All right. The plaintiff could not compel an owner to comply with positive covenant entered into by his predecessor in title. Assuming but not considering that covenants are even binding on that polar tenancy, the covenant made, made on the land in obese possession made by his father with OKK is a positive covenant. Let me define a positive covenant here. A covenant is a contract between landowners to do or not to do something on the land. So when we talk about positive covenant, it is to do something on the land, which is to plant palm tree on the land as stated in the fact. But negative covenant, which we are not talking about here, it is not to do something. Maybe um, OKK's family is restricting Obi's family from not doing something, or let's say from not fencing the land or from not cultivating a particular crop on the land. But here, they allow the cultivation of palm tree on the land. So it is a positive covenant. And since positive covenant allows growing, growing palm tree, not restricting a certain action, such covenant is positive and does not run with land to the successor in title. That is, in a positive covenant, the, the covenant made by the predecessor Excuse me, does not Q. run a. Ibrahim, to the... we understand it where you are. <laughs> Proceed to your next point so that you can make the um, progress quickly, because this is um is a positive. We understand it. Uh, uh -huh. Thank you, thank you, boy. Therefore, Obi can validly clear all the palm trees on the land and set up a pure water factory on the land, as he has done, since he's not bound by any covenant made on the land in his possession under the Kola tenancy. Your worship, we submit to hold that Obi is not bound by any covenant made on the land in his possession. On this, your worship, I would like to defer proceeding to my co-counsel to converse argument on EU3. is our strong contention that 
the that okay K cannot lawfully eject B from the land in this with the uh, you know for corruption. As held in Moje was Moje Kuala mentioned before the honorable court, the court held that the grant of in in law in which is exercisable, exercisable on the dimension of the tenancy and your worship. The full tenancy is now determined as held in OV, OVIE versus Ono Ryobo Kiri. Ono Ryobo Kiri. O N O R I O B O K R H I E. In 1954, that full tenancy is not determined upon the death of the grantee, but by an action for forfeiture. Your worship, by an action for forfeiture. Your worship, it is therefore the full tenancy under which OB is holding a possessive right cannot be reversed to a okay family by the head of family. That's the plenty of worship. Through the use of drugs, the court has laid down the procedure for the for the grantor that has located family in this in, in this instant case, represented by the family head, to, to include an action for forfeiture, which the plaintiff has not done. The worship, the, 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 the plaintiff cannot put the law in his hand in order to prevent lawlessness in society. And the court uh, is saddled with the responsibility, is saddled with the duty. To resolve disputes between parties as held as contained in section six or six B of the Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria, nineteen ninety nine, as all that. Therefore, it as as we to, to settle disputes. As a result, the process is like by the plaintiff in this instance to reverse the policy rights owned and the policy rights in the exercised by the this is Therefore, the policy rights by, uh, enjoyed by the defendants will continue to go on and on as held in the case of Belo Salami, Belo Salami, and other, and another versus Alaji, Alaji, Adetore, A D E T O R E, Lawal, a 2020, a 20. It's not an eight case where the court held that it will continue to go on and on until it is forfeited. And as long as the law is not forfeited, the, the defendants will continue to enjoy the policy over the state land. Therefore, we submit on this issue that the that the case cannot lawfully eject or be from the land in question and other worship to so old. And on the old of a lot of people. We all the you court to so dismiss this case in its entirety because it's lack of funds and it's lack merit and grant the relief sought by the defendants. And before the board of the court, the defendant has prayed the following prayer a declaration that the defendant is in lawful position of the land in dispute. Two, a declaration of the court that the defendant. Is not bound by the covenant made on the land. A declaration of this honorable court restraining the plaintiff, his agents, servants, or any other person have, of office. Your worship? Three minutes. You need to wrap up. It's the belief. You have three minutes. It's the belief. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Thank you, your worship. You see the best of person. I had on this request from ejecting the defendant from the land in this suit. Another of this honorable court dismissing this suit in its entirety. Another of this honorable court mandating the plaintiff to pay the defendant a sum of 500,000 naira as part of this litigation. And other, plus further order as this honorable court may deem fit to just to make in this announcement of this case. And we see, we, on, on, this, on this note, we are done. With our argument goes on our court, and we urge on this on our court to grant all our prayers as as sought. Thank you, Lordship.
Thank you, Ismail and Ibrahim. Um, Ansel, thank you. Um, you both have conversed a bit. Sorry, I lost you. Can you speak up a bit? I can barely hear you. I don't know if it's from my end. Okay. Um, I say the two uh, the two council has uh, conversed the case in a very good manner. And, uh, uh, it's just that I actually pointed out to the can you hear me? I don't know if the council can hear me. I pointed yes. out the fact that okay, you are before an high court and you are not addressing the court, uh, the court properly. Um, unfortunately, they didn't take to the correction. But overall, they've done very well. Uh, of course, I wish the two teams. Uh, yeah. They did very well with time management too. Yeah, and the time management. This, the both of them. So, Moderator, over to you. I think we sign okay. off. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. Um, can you hear me? Quite well. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. And clearly. Okay, great. Okay, great. So um, it has been... <laughs> A battle of um, well, I use the word fierce, fiercest now. What I don't know what, what I will use, but um, I understand all the all the points conversed for or against. I appreciate our honourable judges for this uh, wonderful court sitting, and I believe the councils um, in the various teams. You you have a little. You now have a little sting of how the the real life courtroom scenario is um usually it can be more fierce than you're seeing um but i appreciate your patience and how you were able to address um the judges i think um basically the reason why we left out the issue of jurisdiction for you to decipher in the question on the facts is for us to know if you can you know as a lawyer understand just... for the part, exactly adjust and and i mean to the jurisdiction of the court and um you have all maybe except for one team you have done um quite well in deciphering the um the court of competent jurisdiction in addressing the court and so i really appreciate that fact so like i mentioned these are some of the uh, points that will be used um to judge in this uh, issue and um you also pointed out i think one of the teams pointed out that um uh, we mentioned that they should serve uh, notices. I don't think we said preliminary that. objection. Exactly. Yes, please. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, preliminary objection. So, but we only said that you should submit your written addresses immediately. I'm, I'm sure by now you should After be today's pressing day. your set. Yeah, you should be pressing your send button to send me that, those emails of your addresses. Um, it will also help the this this um, um mute court is recorded. It's pre-recorded, so um, the judges would also listen again, and then analyze also with your written addresses um, to give their final judgment. The final judgment will not be at uh, this because of the length of time we have already consumed. So um, they will go back, um, look at the addresses again, listen to the tape, uh, the recording, and then give um, and then give really? their final judgment. So. Um, finally, I would like to appreciate um, a foundation for this opportunity to hold this um, this live virtual meet court competition. It was brought to you by Honorable Justice Innocent Ms. Mike Foundation. So I really appreciate the judges. Um, His lordships, I really appreciate Sulumide Agbede and uh, so Ifoma Iloba Ijete. I really appreciate your. Thank you. Um, it was my pleasure yeah, to be here. here. And then to the teams, to the teams, um, you have done you have done exceedingly well. 
and this is the first of its kind in Nigeria. So I do not expect that it should, um, but, but this is also an opportunity for you to learn. Um, I expected that um, councils will go online to see what other countries um, in the globe, especially in the first world countries, to know what uh, they have done in the area of virtual mid court competition. And I also expected that um, the councils will take into consideration time management. I mean, the court does not have all day to listen to only your matter. Imagine if um, the court had like 20 cases um, to hear that day, and then you are taking up the whole day with your, I mean, it's, it's, and then when you are making your point, even if you have 30 minutes, I was expecting that at the end of the day, if each council speaks for at least 10 minutes, 10 minutes, you should leave at least five minutes each for rebuttals of the other parties. I didn't hear anybody say- We didn't get um, any rebuttals. Uh, so. I, I was expecting that, I uh, would say, oh, my Lord, um, uh, we will be reserving council five minutes of our Sunday. time for rebuttals. <laughs> so, um, so these are these are some of the things that um, councillors should take note of going forward, especially for those who will be going for um, the finals. Okay, so take note of this. You do not have to exhaust your thirty minutes on just stating your claim and issues and all that. Try to make allowance for your submissions and then make another allowance for rebuttals. So if that is noted, uh, I would like to close this session for us to. Um, get prepared for uh, the finals. You will receive emails of the successful um, uh, teams that will go to the finals. So thank you so much. We really appreciate. And then see you on the next one. Thank you. Thank you. Till later. Yes. Bye. Bye. Okay. So um, everyone, if you can unmute yourselves, kindly just uh, wave and maybe say something so we know that. You heard the last things I said. Kindly unmute yourselves and then. Oh, bye. Good. Thank you for. Bye, okay. everyone. It was fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank, you. Okay. Thank you for the advice. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Best okay. wishes going forward. Yeah. Thank you, Ma. Meeting different yeah. people all over the country. Thank you for the opportunity.